And we're live. Here we are, another Saturday Night Live, March 7th, 2020. And away we go. <laughs> we had a nice day here in Toronto. Nice, beautiful, sunny, a little cool. It's uh, nice to see the sunshine again. And uh, But those cold, crispy, sunny days are nice too. <laughs> So we uh, we continue to move forward and uh, do what we got to do. Uh, Ju yeah, Judith. So uh, as we were uh, saying, uh, you know, we need to uh, continuously put that effort into ourselves every day, every day, every day, every day. If we start skipping days what starts happening to the monkey mind. Oh, one day, you know, maybe I can do two this week. And then it goes to three and, and then you fall into that trap. So whatever the monkey mind says, you know, the, delete, delete. That's not nothing to do with us. It's, it's just that programming that was installed. You want to, we can say that installed within all of us. <laughs> and it's, um, I, I, there's nothing is ever lost whatever is recorded, whatever happens in existence is never, can never be erased from the time, from, you know, from the, the quantum field. It's always there, but we can, uh, if you understand hard drives, I've, I haven't shared this for a while. When you uh, have a hard drive and you uh, format it, um, the information can still be retrieved. Um, even if you format it a few times, it's just um, how much are you willing to pay and how much is the information worth to you? And most likely it can be retrieved, even if it's formatted a few times. So, you know, if you look at things that are discovered, invented, whatever you want to call, they're all a reflection of what's within all of us. They can, nothing can be new from creation it's already all there and we're just um duplicating the things that are in creation within our the way our physicality works or in whatever's in nature and and we you know computers phones this that it's it's all available within us so you know this is is a miraculous thing when we look at that because we have access to all that information and that's the beauty we all have access to the all knowing of one creation, which contains the complete um, knowledge of creation itself, which goes back to the beginning of time, if there is such a thing. And um, it's within us all. And for some reason, when we come are born into this realm, we pass that our mother's a birth canal. It's all gone. It's, we blanked out. <laughs> But um, I, I don't know if you guys have been paying attention to a lot of these uh, type of uh, prodigy type children that more and more are coming around. And they you know they're like geniuses at five, six, seven years old. Um, you know, how does that happen? I think I just posted one about that little girl, uh, seven or eight, uh, eight languages and eight in instruments and so on. Well, how does that happen? Well, for some reason, she's able to access that information much easier than, than most of us. And, uh, you know, how, how else can't it, can it happen? Um, you know, you're, you're, uh, you, when we obtain this, uh, downloaded programming from this realm, um, it's, uh, it's designed basically to dumb us down. Uh, I don't know how else we can put it. <laughs> Yeah. And it, it takes away our creativity and our, um, our um, function on how to access these limitless realms, what I like to call. So um, how do we get that back? Well, for me, um, the one thing was start fasting. And the more you fast, the more you fast, the more you fast, the, goal, the more the yeah, you surrender to the soul, the more you, you start gaining access to this information. Um, like all this stuff that is laid out in MFS, this is nothing that I've created. It's all there. It's just, it came to a point that with so many fasts that more and more of, of this information was being revealed, you know, and, uh, you know, we see it from other people who've shared 
um, and taught us about fasting and other things and so on and so forth. Um, but uh, this, this is the key, you know, just fast and uh, make it a lifestyle. That is your focus. Fasting is the lifestyle. The eating, we do it for fun. We don't have to put all that pressure in, into us and in saying that, that's it, we're done with food and we don't want to hate food because that road is not going to help you. Love we to love eat. to eat, but we love fasting way freaking more, right? So, you know, keep singing that same old tune and uh, eventually you're going to start believing it and uh, you're going to find more and more truth. balance. Yeah, yeah well, it's the truth. You, you will, there's no other way around it. You will believe it eventually. We, we know what food does, right? We're all experts at eating. We know what it does to the body. Um, and most of us here have been down th through some kind of health challenge. Most of us. Uh, people but that, but still, we enjoy food. You know, we still yeah, love food. People that have come to the, you know, are searching for something because there's something out of balance and uh, they want they want a better light way of life. So um, this is the way we do it. We we focus on a fasting lifestyle. And, and this is why we say, you know, mass fasting lifestyle, less is more. Um, it truly is. It truly is. We, you know, we, have, we all, we all have, have had a taste of it that have been uh, doing the master fast of what less is more really means. And then when we go back to food, whoa, <laughs> you know, it's, it's like, what's going on here? You know, it depends also what it, you eat yeah, and how often you eat it, and how much you eat. You, you cannot compare any of the foods with the, the, the state of fasting versus the, uh, the state of, of being on field. You just, you just cannot. And many of us are trying to get, uh, obtain that feeling that we're, we're, we're addicted to, I guess, when we're in that fasting state through eating, but it's not going to happen. I don't care what diet you eat. If you're hundred percent fruit, it's not going to happen. It's, it's, you, you gotta, we have to come to that new understanding that all foods are obstructive. That's why we, Drew yeah, but spiral. you still have to be, you know, you still have to make your choices with the food, you know, like, uh, just because all foods are obstructive. Yeah, yeah, but I'm not saying we don't, we're not being, saying yeah, we love eating, you know, but we love fasting. Yeah. But that's the spiral we made. You know, we've, we've, yeah. we've been watching uh, people make all kinds of these food pyramids. There's no, there's no straight lines in the universe. <laughs> there's no straight lines. So right away I said, this, this doesn't make any sense. Everything's spiraled. Everything is, is flowing. Everything is curved, right? And um, yeah. when you spiral inwards, you're going into that soul, into the essence of soul. That's where you'll find, um, and in that emptiness, you'll find everything. Mm -hmm. And as we go outwards, right, yeah. eating heavier and heavier and heavier, we get more and more confused, more that's and more plugged. Yeah. Fasting is part of every religion uh, for thousands of years. And that's because of um, the connection to God, you know, to the truth within us it's all there it's it's it's, it's in you know it's and uh, yeah and you just want to find you want to find your balance uh, between fasting <clears throat> and uh, eating you know um if you want to stop eating that's also you know an option but uh for sure you know i mean some people are finding great you know uh, results with just intermittent fasting so you just have to find your balance. Sure, yes, we feel better with um, you know more fasting days. So incorporate maybe more fasting days into your life. Yeah? Um, yeah. When you were mentioning the girl who can speak all these languages, um, I thought of um, my my the first thing that came to my mind was uh, that uh, she believes in herself. Yeah, but uh, we all we all have that ability. What what's stopping us from tapping into that's the question. Yeah, you have yeah, to ask. Yeah. Obstructions. Sure. Yes. Yes. It's yes. Obstructions, obstructions but can at also, all levels, physical, mental, remember, emotional. Remember, uh, obstructions can also be emotional, right? It can be. Um, I, I feel many times, you know, um, our achievement level growing up depends on our parents. It really does. Environmental, not even genetic. You know. Uh, but it's all you can't really separate genetic from environmental for the parents themselves but um for the kids i feel if you put them in an environment where you help them believe in themselves 
they were believing themselves. Environments dictate and, outcome, and they internal, become, external. They become top students or, or whatever, top, you know, at different things because their parents care. The majority of parents, in my opinion, don't care about, about school. Really. They don't really care so much about school. And so uh, uh, the kids don't care about school. Why would the kids care about school if the parents don't, you know? Um, I used to be a very bad student, like you can say, you know, uh, growing up like one of the worst. But until maybe I think the age of nine or something, when I started, um, when I changed, when my mom got sick and I started praying and I started studying and I became a top student. And that transformation from being one of the worst to being one of the best in my class um, as a teenager, um, it was a bit amazing. Uh, it was, um, you know, after that experience, I knew that we can do so much and you can, we can change. Um, yeah, we can definitely change. Um, it's about really believing in ourselves and sometimes your parents will not, will not um, provide this environment where you believe in yourself. You will find some kids where their parents put them on top as a priority. And not, not meaning that they're slaves to their kids, but they, they do really care about their kids and you can tell they, they know what they're doing. Um, and you can see the kids are much more confident, much more um, able to believe in themselves. And a person, for example, like this girl, in my opinion, I am sure it goes back to her parents. It's not easy to get parents like that. It's rare. At one and a half years old, she started saying things that the mother noticed. What do you mean? <laughs> it's well, good for her. But yeah, you can talk to your kids when they're in your belly, right? Yeah, of yeah. course. So yeah, the way you treat them, they, they're affected from the beginning. Even before they're born, right? I mean, before they're, I mean, fertilized. You know? Before they're conceived, conceived, you can start working on it. Mm. Yeah, that's you're working on the fields, and mm. then the fields come through how, in the in the through the intent and emotion that you create. <clears throat> so it's all uh, everything's possible. Yeah, but it's so it's so nice to see that transformation, you know, for, for people. I, I love it. I love it. Kurt, we saw Ben there running. That was uh, awesome. Are you around? Is he here? Yeah, I'm just eating up some animal water. <laughs> oh, yeah. Awesome. And a month? Yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, that's been his thing for the last year or so. He always did it, but uh, in the last... Well, I wouldn't say the hallway thing, but the last year or so since he started fasting, it's he's been doing it more, and the speed and his uh, energy has just increased so much. So, oh, yeah, and even on runs, he'll just start taking off running, and I can barely keep up to him. So Awesome. Yeah, it's good to see. It's uh, Yeah, with, with animals, even though he's up there, what is he, 15, 14? 14. 14. Yeah, you know that's up that's up there with for animals, but uh, you know with animals, their their uh, healing capabilities are much quicker than ours because their lifespans are shorter, and uh, you can see it coming through very quickly. It's just awesome to watch. And maybe you can oh, yeah. control them more than you can control yourself sometimes. <laughs> yeah. No. So uh, how's the how's uh, your mom? She uh, starting to believe more? Yeah, she. <laughs> She's like, goes in waves. Yeah, I know. She'll, uh, what, like, it's, it's amazing. <laughs> I'll, I'll just, some days she'll just get worried or, uh, her, her beliefs and programming gets in the way. And then yeah. I'll ask, do you remember where he was a year and a half ago? <laughs> and do you realize where he would probably be if I didn't do any of this? And she gets it. It's just. If she's not having the experience herself, yeah, it's hard for her to believe in it. But she also, at the same time, can't deny it. And when he goes there, she feeds him the food. She does his twelve-hour dries, uh, minimum, and then uh, you, you know that's kind of the basic. And then I do the herbs and uh, enemas at my place. But you, um, what's that? Can you remind us of where he comes from? 
Sorry, what's that? Where Can you remind from? us of as like uh, last year? What what? Yeah, so it was Thank fall you. of 2018. He had like a seizure, and it was late at night. His eyes started twitching, and uh, this hadn't happened. So I was like, okay, something's going wrong, going on here. And uh, I don't know how severe. Like I'm not a vet or a doctor, and I don't. It doesn't really matter, but. Um, yeah, he was clearly in distress. And then I just kind of made a change. I, I was doing the, the Morse herbs and the fasting. And like I switched his diet, took him off all the, all the commercial dog food, did veggies and uh, kind of raw dehydrated meat. And uh, the one thing that I found strange was he was doing like 20 hour, the dry fasting, whole thing I knew about it and I just kind of experimented he was doing himself he wasn't touching his water and uh it, he was getting up to like 20 hours someday uh so I just let him go because I, I had been on this journey I understood it and I was like I'm not fighting it and over that I would say eight six to eight months um I was in Asia, three of them, and my mom, she kept up with the herbs and the diet and the raw food and, and everything, and I assume let him dry fast and uh, kept him on that, so I'm pretty proud of her for that, and then I got back and kept him going, and in that period, he lost, he was 25.5 pounds, five pounds overweight, <laughs> and he lost about four, four and a half pounds, and his ideal weight was supposed to get down to 20. Let me backtrack and say his state of being during the, the seizure, seizures was about eight to ten tumors all over his back. His eyesight was getting cloudy. He was starting to become deaf. Are they cancerous tumors? I, I, how do I know? I didn't, I didn't take him to uh, the vet. I didn't, my logic was I didn't really want to know. He was old. What, what's it going to do for me? So I didn't, we didn't take him. Um, I think we were both kind of just in denial. We didn't really want to even look at it. Um, That's and just slowly over those months, everything just started shrinking. It's through obviously the filtration and the dries and whatnot. And then that's kind of all I can think of for now. But he started plateauing, I would say, last fall. So about a year later. And then he wasn't... Uh, you know, what was I? Okay. He was having str trouble with the dries. He was, he was wanting water in the middle of the night. He was having a hard time doing 12 hours. A lot of stress in the family was going on this time too, obviously. So that's probably connected. Yeah. But, um. Healing reactions. He yeah. Healing reactions. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so in general, basically, he started with seizures. He's like an older dog, and he had seizures. And right, but the plateauing in that, I don't know if that was a healing reaction as much as it was a limitation of what I was doing because I didn't have him on your protocol. I didn't have the pudding. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I didn't have uh, – I wasn't really doing enough herbs. Uh, the enemas I hadn't done up until that point. Uh, uh, the calcium water. Uh whatnot so I think he was starting to plateau he was eating the veggies and whatnot and um anyway so since I've transitioned he broke out of that he's back up to 16 hours when he's with me uh a day 16 18 hours and everything started getting better you know he I just was hyper aware of his body so I could tell if he was kind of uh in an eliminated mode or starting to back up again he would start mm -hmm. to stiffen up a bit and whatnot so yeah, in the last three months, he's gotten, he's doing great. His and uh, since all that stuff, his eyesight's come back. I'd say eighty percent. The last thing we've noticed in the last couple of months, my mom noticed was his hearing's back. We used to be able to like slam a door; he wouldn't hear it, and uh, we can't even tiptoe out of a room and the the cracks in the floor wake him. So that's pretty sweet. <laughs> And, uh, and uh, awesome. you said his uh, eyesight was not also was impaired? Oh, yeah, it was super cloudy and he would have a hard time walking at night. And uh, wow. yeah, I just noticed it. I noticed, though, it'll fluctuate within days or weeks at a time, just depending on 
I think it's just more obstruction moving out. I could always see kind of goop coming out of his eyes. Yeah. Early on. That's like healing reactions. He has to go through that, right? So it's going to be. Yeah, up. but the, the one thing he still has had is the big, a big lump is pretty much the main one. If, if that that's left, there's, they're all pretty much gone under his armpit. And I've heard like, sometimes you guys say tumors push out as a way of releasing and, you know, my initial thought is, oh, something's going wrong. He's getting backed up, but I've kind of just... Well, the, the, the tumors, the body encapsulates uh, uh, yeah. these obstructions because it doesn't, doesn't know what to do with them. And it, so, it protects itself by it, yeah. keeping so it the them. waste in, in, a, in a growth rather than all over the body, which would... And like, of course, the body's backed up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, like it's uh, like to protect basically the vital organs so you don't die quickly, right? So you have tumors uh, stuff in them uh, that are that are you know like um, um, and, uh, you know, and thing, yeah the tumors. But you have the liver as well, for example, the kidneys. You know they get they get clogged. Uh, the liver is um I would say is a detox. Yeah, it's a detox organ, right? So it it holds on to a lot of crap too. So we get the uh, liver, gold, bladder, stones, right? Uh, with the stagnant bile. Um, so yeah. that's, again, that's a way of protecting the body. It's there to detox our blood. So we don't, right. it doesn't go to our vital organs and then we have um, big complications. The body knows what to do. Um, you know, when we're eating, um, it's a problem because there's no uh, elimination mode really happening yeah. except for when, People are sleeping. That's if that. Some people actually get up in the middle of the night to eat or drink because they're so backed up. So, but that's not enough, right? Because when you're sleeping and you're eating, yeah. you're, it's digesting the food. Uh, what, uh, what was the longest dry he, he's done? You know, uh, my guess in the last year, maybe 20, 22, 23 hours. You never had him do a day or two. Just based on his lifestyle for the first 13 years, my mom's been like the primary caregiver in the last, I would say, five, six years. I've kind of have been the other half at my place if she has to go somewhere. But I'd say in the last year, I took over. So all that emotion, um, basically, he can get till evening fine. But from five to six on, it's I've just kind of accepted good luck. Uh, I'm not saying it's not possible, but I've kind of just uh, accepted that one, you know? It's, uh, like I said, it's hard enough doing just the one meal, let alone without the raw treats after, right? It's more of an emotional thing. Yeah. So, so we're used to it, but, um, you know, try a 24, like a straight 24. And, and uh, it's yeah, it's not look far off. And, you know, once you get over that hurdle, and then you go to the, you know, 48. Um, you don't know, no rush. Yeah, and the protocol we recommend uh, 24 hours. Therapy. Same as human protocol. Uh, the dog one is like minimum, they want 15 to 18. Per day. Yeah, yeah and then the 24 hour weekly. In the, yeah, so in the wild. No, yeah, there's no more. In the wild, they're doing it. They're, they're doing it on their own. And sometimes they'll go days without any drinking or uh, eating, right? Yeah. So, oh, it's not my belief. If he would, do, if he would do it, I'd let him. It's just uh, like I said, he was doing it voluntarily. So I figured, which I kind of think was true, is that using the pudding, the enemas, the herbs, and being consistent uh, has helped move out those obstructions, which are going to make the dries easier, right? And I've noticed that he went from struggling to drink uh, throughout the night to. 16 17 hours in just two months three months yeah that's good uh, what uh when you were feeding him before like through most of his life how many times would you feed him a day once or more yeah you don't you don't want to know <laughs> uh, yeah i wasn't feeding him but yeah he was being fed multiple times so basically and that, now you understand right why why he got into the situation right Oh, and he was eating dog food and like he was eating chips and ugh, like not good stuff. And they just, I, you, you forgive them. They know not what they do, right? It was, uh, 
Yeah, like dogs, it's, it's, it's no one once a day, man, <laughs> at the most. Yeah. Last it once a week at least. Uh, Humans too, but I had, know, uh, it's easier to control animals. I, I had an adopted dog uh, I, I got, and uh, he was, uh, you know, overweight, he was a mutt, and, uh, you know, he was lazy, and I started fasting the dog twice a week. Started giving him raw meat back then, you know, uh, from what I knew, and the dog you know, lost weight and started becoming okay. like a young dog again very quickly. Yeah. So, yeah, you know. yeah, he's been getting lots of compliments over the last year. Uh, we met a 16 year old dog yesterday, a couple of days ago, and she thought he was, Ben was five. And <laughs> so I was like, all right, I'm doing something right. Yeah, well, if, if you looked at Rosie's pictures, you know, the, the dog Rosie. Oh, yeah, I, I saw all that. People think she, she thinks she's a puppy sometimes. Like, she complete transfer. She's sort of got to be around nine years old, I believe, somewhere around there. One funny – sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I'm saying in her photos, she looked more tired when she was young, when she was, um, yeah, when she was sick. And oh, yeah. Really, you know, very I'll try to – yeah, I'll try to find a – a decent photo that shows him like a couple years ago yeah before and after yeah but um before during what, I, what i was gonna say with my dog is uh my mom's side of the family has seen him and they kind of through seeing him they can realize that i'm not maybe so crazy after all because <laughs> they can't they can maybe look at me i get skinny or a little like wiry at times but with him i can see they're kind of like wow because uh, we had an incident with my grandma last six months ago. And you talk about your story with your mom with the enema or the colonic and that. Um, and putting them in nursing homes. We had an incident where my grandma was getting all these infections. And uh, like, I don't know if you've heard of C. diff. It's like this massive bacterial thing with elderly community. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, the whole family was on that trip and uh basically i wrote up this whole protocol to help my grandma and i i tried to meet her where she was at kind of like with your mom like somewhere in the middle and my mom was going to move in and help and uh she got her first colonic came out was glowing and then a day or two later had a reaction where I didn't find out until she was in a merge. They drove her to a merge because they didn't know what was happening or she started to turn blue and whatever. And uh, prior to that, I had been saying you, you, it's been two weeks since you got the colonic. Like, and at this point she was pretty critical. I said, you need to keep one a week at least with her state to keep it moving. And uh, at this point, my mom's like the only one on board. The whole family thinks we're nuts. And, uh, so they had that incident drove her and then basically she was in critical condition for a few days i said i know what it is it's obstruction it's had to move something had to move out she's just so backed up has the big stomach stuff's rotting bacteria's feeding on that etc and uh my mom said yeah her blood pressure was like 60 over 40 so it was insanely low and she was they were basically thinking she was gonna go had this massive bowel movement. My mom said it. she's never smelled anything so bad. Wow. Survived. And, I, and, I, and she goes, you know what, Kurt? I think everything you've been talking about, about I think that bowel movement saved her life. And I said, okay. do you think so? And, uh, and then ever since then, I basically gave up with it. I, you know, if I go there, my mom cooks. I don't push anything anymore. I just learned. I'd rather let my grandma enjoy her last days and not, you know what I mean? It's like, you can't, do, it's sad to see people suffer. And like yeah. since that six months, my grandma's alive, but, and she was on insane amounts of antibiotics, but what has it done? She's probably her visions, maybe 20% of what it was before. So she's pretty much blind her hearing's terrible and her cognition has just gone down. And obviously they think, what do they think? It's age and no, it's uh, chemicals and the obstructions that they're not dealing with. But um, anyway, I just found that was funny that tied in with uh, oh, yeah, the yeah. Ben story. Right. You know, but 
That's like six months ago it happened? Yeah, that was last summer. Mm. Yeah, it's, uh, it's sad, you know, yeah. you know, watching all these old people and... Uh, and the family, they're not on they're, board and you're trying your best. They're, they're, the poor people are just plugged up and they're being injected and... Oh, man, it's just like... Because of the understanding. Right? It's so much... I mean, the family ignorance. as well. The it's family. just like... The family, I would say, like, maybe is like the worst, really, and when it comes to you know supporting you know with, with cleansing and detoxing the family can be like well when it's a serious condition um maybe in my opinion they can be a reason why people many people die because you're just bombarded by their opinions which are not true you know well what's their first reaction fear whenever they hear something like a diagnosis or a state the state of their loved one what do they do with that fear we're going to listen to a doctor because they must know what's best. They studied and that. you can make the most sense in the world. Like even my uncle, he's like, yeah, I know you make sense, but wouldn't that have been good like 30 years ago? Or, you know, I get it, but she's like, yeah. and I just. Would have been and, 30 years ago, but hey, we're not 30. Right. We're, we're today. <laughs> but they don't understand that if she's even 94, that starting like one day of transit, uh, one day of, of of a lifestyle opens the door to the next day and, and can and transform like with ben if i just said oh no he's 13 he's 14 he's got no hope what good do i have what, what good is it right exactly. but you can relate when you said that story with your mom and having to take her off the benzos and you got probably siblings with opinions and that's the hardest one you know with friends or acquaintances you can detach somewhat um, easier emotionally but when you have a when you care about everyone's got an opinion it's tough. and uh often you know seven to one or two is gonna win mm -hmm. i feel for me honestly like if it's my when it's my parents my my dad for example doesn't believe in colonics um like let's say he's 80 90 and he doesn't want to do colonics and he's like struggling I, i'm not gonna push him i just can't because they're too stubborn. They have their own way. <laughs> you know? Let me say this, though. But when your grandma, two weeks later, a month later, three months later, says, hey, hey Karen, to my mom, why don't you take me to that place where they flushed out my bottom again? And she remembers it through all these memory issues. That's when it's a little tougher, you know? You know, I would love... Because she felt better. When, when the person themselves... She remembers it. <laughs> the client, the patient asks for it, you know, whatever, the person asks for it, not their family uh, keeps encouraging them and they don't give a crap about their, I mean, I'm not gonna I, keep encouraging somebody who doesn't care about colonics. Uh, but if I see an interest, I'm there for them and I will defend them against all the other family members because that's their, that, that's their choice. But they have to make the choice and it's hard because you have to believe, you know? Yeah. Well, you, they get older, they get vulnerable. The kids start to make decisions for them. They look to the kids to make decisions for them. They're not, they don't trust their own opinions, right? And anyway, it's, uh, it is what it is. At this point, though, I've just had to detach and let it go. And yeah. at the end of the day, you have to realize, okay, they're family, but they're also their own soul on their own journey with their own free will. Everyone else has their free will. They have their choices to learn and it can be, you know what, you, your grandmother can be 90 years old and she can make her decision. Yeah. If she really wants to clean up, she let her make it. I don't think yeah. if she's strong enough, then let her, let her go. She's not for it, you know, she's she's not into it. Yeah. But um, um yeah, so um, I mean I, I'm I'm impressed by older women who are, you know, like grandmother age and they are taking care of themselves. I'm just, I, I love that. Or, you know, positive attitude. Um, mm -hmm. uh, lo loving life, somehow making it work, okay? Nobody has to be perfect. My goodness, emotional, like, uh, you know, health is also huge, you know? And, and you see some people, people who are very healthy emotionally. Maybe they don't know enough physically, you know, like, well, I mean, they don't know enough about cleansing and fasting and healing, uh, which also affects the emotions even more. 
but you still see a big smile on their face. You see how happy they are. And it's very impressive. Even in their 60s, you know, when I, I see some clients, I just love it. I, I, I'm absolutely impressed. Being Just being open-minded to listen to me, you know, is, is impressive. It really is. Sometimes you get a 20-year-old who's not even open to listen about fruits and vegetables, you know? And you see a 60, 70 year old who is uh, open and, and enthusiastic to change your lifestyle and to improve. And I just love it. It's um, very inspiring to me. I would love to be like that one day. Definitely, I don't want to be an 80 year old with no project in my life. Even if it, it doesn't have to be, it's not about, you know, it doesn't have to be a business or money. But there's so much we can do in the world. <laughs> There is so much we can do. We really, I feel sometimes I would love to do much more than what I'm doing, um, but I don't have the time. And um, it's nice, you know. I, of course, you don't want to be stressed like that and think, oh, I'm so stressed, I want to do this, I want to do that. Like you want to find your balance and be happy. But I also always would love to have a project in my life um, because without a project, there's no purpose, <laughs> you know, like, there's, um, you know, you would feel you're not important. You would, you know, you have to have something like uh, Steve, for example, you're, for example, you know, you're growing all that food and you're giving it away and that makes you feel amazing. And even if you're 80, I'm sure you still want to do it, the same thing, right? Just a number. <laughs> Just a number. Yeah, but, uh, you know, if your grandmother was asking to go again, bring her. <laughs> oh, let me let me finish the last part of that. So, when they released her after she came through it, we see a note on the fridge from the doctor saying, "This is the only note that they took home. Uh, please avoid colon hydrotherapy due to potential perforation." <laughs> <laughs> so they clearly the, uh, the siblings had an agenda we're going to get doctor what are the chances the doctor brings up col colon hydrotherapy unless they mentioned it can you give yeah. us your opinion yeah. and so now my mom she doesn't believe in it enough she has the guilt she doesn't want her mother's passing on her conscience so it's just a big mess so I've, I've, I've kind of I still have emotion with it but I've, I've kind of had to let it go they probably yeah. think that the reason she went to the emergency because is because of the colonics, right? right? Absolutely. They think, oh, she was starving because we were doing juices and smoothies and more liquids the first half of the day, cleaning up stuff in the back, back half of the day, giving her uh, kidney herbs. I think I had it from Morse at the time and just, just doing little things. Uh, and she was doing good that month. Her brain was clearing up, her cognition, her... Uh, I'm pretty sure her senses were better, but then those waves hit because she's 94 and eating a certain way her whole life. And like I said, if they're not diligent, go to get the colonic. My mom went away, you know, just a few extra days that hits. What do they do? Panic goes and then it just flushes. So, you know, it's hard enough taking care of yourself, let alone me being like two people removed from the situation. right? Especially yeah, when you don't live together in the same house, it's pretty hard. You know? you have yeah. To what to do, but she doesn't get it. You know, and she's 94. I mean, good for her. Yeah, it's like you were saying though, her attitude is great, you know, better attitude than me. And I, I have the tunnel vision with the food sometimes, but the mentality is often more important. Well, yeah, you, you, um, you still have an amazing attitude and I'm sure this has to do with your grandmother. <laughs> I've, I've, I've never heard of perforated colon from hydro. Yeah. Um, no, not the 10 pounds of waste rotting in there. That's not going to perforate the colon, but the water going up water. is. You know, in general, medical doctors are not op are not into colonics. Uh, I have, I, like, you know. It'll, it'll put I've them out of business. So, <laughs> There's, uh... I've, say, I've seen all kinds of, like, uh, professions come for colonics, but not a medical doctor. I only have one, and she's a psychiatrist, and she's into natural healing. You know, I like she's into you know, more emotional stuff, and she doesn't like to give prescription drugs. She likes to avoid them. Um, the only reason she's open-minded is because she dated a chiropractor in the past, 
and so she was open to natural therapies. But uh, yeah. medical doctors, they are not open. I have many nurses, many nurses who work with medical doctors, but not medical doctors for whatever reason. My, my friend who's a colon therapist for 30 years now, over 30 years, he had a few doctors. One of them, I remember, he was very constipated. He was in the uh, emergency room, ER, whatever you mm. call it. And this guy was going regularly because he was so constipated. Uh, medical doctor. Medical doctor, yeah. Nice. So, you know, uh, he does. Um, I, don't, I don't know where they come up with this perforation thing. Um, there's uh, the colonic devices. There's some of them that are FDA approved. And they're approved for washing the colon before an operation. That's what they're approved for, nothing else. <laughs> what do you mean before the operation? It's empty. They gotta, they, they gotta empty the bowels before an operation. Yeah, I mean, mine is FDA approved. They, they might use them in emergencies because my aunt, like years ago, she hadn't gone, she had con like severe constipation, like her intestines got knotted and she had went weeks or over, I don't know, months without going and they gave her an enema after doing some scan, they could see all this stuff in there and in that case, but. Yeah, yeah enemas, 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 yeah, but, but colonics, uh, I haven't seen. Or oh, colonic, yeah. In a, in a hospital, I haven't heard. Yeah. Uh, probably 1920s, maybe, or before, but not, I mean, uh, in East Europe, they used to have something like that, uh, colonics, yeah. but not, uh, colonics not here. Colonics need to be mandated. You want to get, Service, you got to do a colonic first. <laughs> yeah, especially in emergencies, you know, you someone like changes. your grandmother, you know, going to the hospital because of uh, uh, being very backed up. The first thing, you, you, in my opinion, the most beneficial thing and the safest thing really to do would be colonics um, in emergency. You know. Heart problems, that's, uh, you know, kidneys. And kidneys go back to the colon. Infection, what they call infections, etc., 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 etc. So we know we know what we know what it works. It's uh, it's not rocket science. It's so simple. Um, clean up the filth. Body restores itself. Less filth you put in, better yeah. your body's gonna work. Yeah, you know, medical doctors. You know, we we can't really blame them too much. You know, I mean, uh, they are doing whatever they're doing. Um, um but but for how well, how is it that many nurses they all work together in the same hospital many nurses would come for a colonic but medical doctors are not open for it it's just it's really a little bit yeah strange why is it that nurses are more open-minded than doctors even with fasting right you would see many more nurses less educated in our group exactly right <laughs> So what I'm thinking, it's not, you know, it's not about the school, of course. Of course, they have much more schooling than most of us, but they don't have time. They're so busy. They don't have time. I heard that before. They don't have time. They're very busy and uh, they don't have time to look outside and, uh, and uh, learn about other options or what's, whatever is out there. I think one medical doctor um, mentioned that he only started learning about true health when he retired. I don't know, I, I, it was an interview, I think. When he retired, because he had time to, to learn. And, and he said, that's when I started really helping my clients, my, uh, my patients, when I retired, because I had time to learn about what's out there. Because they don't Yeah. Have They're on that program running. I think they're scared to look at the other options too, because what if they start to see things when and they've gone to school for ten years and they got this debt or they're on a certain trajectory? I don't think they want to know. Like once I called my psychiatrist four years ago naively because I was I was feeling good and I'd gotten off meds on my own and I wanted to tell him how well I was doing, which was a mistake. I don't know why I thought of that. I wanted to thank him because he. In, the, in weird ways, he did help me back then in some ways. Um, and he didn't really, he, could, uh, he couldn't grasp it because I wasn't in the revolving door of wanting to stay on meds for 30 years. And his only workplace his could, brain could go was, I'm going to relapse and have a mental health, uh, whatever, relapse. And uh, it just shows you like they 
don't want to, they have that belief system based on statistics and, and it's know. kind of becomes this self-fulfilling prophecy because the goal is to keep a customer for life. No, but no, maybe, maybe not. Okay. Maybe they have good <laughs> intentions, but the thing is they haven't seen many people like you. And so for them, it's, it's like, this is what they yeah. do, that there is no way you'll have to take your medication for, for them because that's, that's the average. What taught. The, but no, but that's the average person. People do not get better for, 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 when they're not doing anything. You have to change. Nobody should ever freaking take a psychiatric drug. Ever, ever, and, ever. And the majority of people do not change. And so, yes, they will give you an estimate. This is how much you're going to live. This is uh, how your, you know, your lifestyle is going to be. You know, you have to take the drug. So, you know, they don't know what's out there. They really don't know what's out there. It's not that they have bad intentions. I mean, they are doctors. The majority of right. them have bad intentions. They really do. I, I, I believe. I agree. They, they're helping people. Um, but they don't know enough. And for example, they don't know about someone like you, a story like yours, because they don't hear it. It's, it's rare, right? Right, but it's not going to change if they're not open to hearing it and adapting that view potentially into their practice or sh shifting out you know what i mean if they're not open to it then how is it going to shift because not everyone is as bullheaded and determined as i was they kind of need that support system right yeah you know the hospitals doctors they have their place uh, emergency stuff oh yeah uh, we're dealing with uh, health stuff stay away you got to take care of yourself they don't, they don't know health. My logic is with a lot of these institutions, 99% of these people are well intentioned, but yeah. the foundations of the systems are already so corrupted that in the educate, it's all interconnected, the education, the healthcare, the whatever, you know, if you want to go deeper, but, and then these people, they become pawns for these systems and they don't even realize that they're supporting you know what i mean it's like they, they don't go in with these intentions to harm people or whatnot they're well-intentioned people that want to help help people but the education system's not updated the the textbooks it's all all the information's controlled so that's all the only hope they have right another, yeah another thing yeah sorry the only thing we focus from from that side is do they actually save lives yes there's people that if they did not get into emergency, they would die. So that's all we could focus on the good of, of it because the rest of it, we know the, the statistics. Are, yeah. uh, With all the drugs. Mm -hmm. um, but another thing is this, um, I really don't know how free they are to practice something else. That's another thing. Mm -hmm. that's another thing, not only there's schooling, they can lose their license. There are many doctors who tried natural you know, treatments on their clients and uh, on their patients, and they eventually lost their license, right? Yep. So, anyway. uh, I, I don't know, it's, it, maybe they're stuck. Long by list. The, whatever, maybe they're stuck. We don't have to figure Some it out. Dead. They will have to figure <laughs> out, right? They will have to figure it out for themselves. Um, but for us, we know what to do when we're not feeling well. Uh, the road is Take know, a trip to back, the toilet. back to nature. <laughs> yeah. Uh, go within, go back to nature and allow the body to heal itself. Just uh, learn. Use the tools. Oh, man. It, it's, it's so simple and, and just people do not want to get it. They will find all the excuses not to change. They're confused. Mm. It's just the programming over, overrides their common sense that's what we see over and over and over and you know people will look at ourselves in the mirror and we'll lie to ourselves to justify what we're doing right yeah we do that it's, i'm sure every single person has done that so how do we get around that well this is a good start what we're doing right here sticking with people that are choosing to make a difference and take charge and be 100 percent responsible mm -hmm. and uh what happens magic happens Magic happens when you do that, because if it is to be, it's up to me, right? This is the saying. We, we got only only we can do it for ourselves. Nobody can do it for us, you know. Um, we we can support each other and nurture each other and emotionally and this and that, but we got to do the work. And uh, what's the work is 
doing less work, meaning less eating, <laughs> and start more cleaning. <laughs> On that note, I'll be back in half hour. <laughs> All right. Take your time. I, I went for a physical last fall. And I think at that by that point, I had turned around the prostate issue. I don't know. There, there are a number of things. <laughs> you forgot. <laughs> I forgot. There was like three, three or four things that were an issue. I mean, especially with the prostate. I was ready to do that stupid ream job, but that's too bad. Yeah, I well, thank God. And so anyway, I went and had the physical. I only went because I wanted, I wanted to know what the liver count was from the hep C. And that, that, that was all fine. But he had the freaking balls to put down in my in my file that I was malnourished. <laughs> yeah, I remember the next thing. Oh, you that? Well, we had we had a heated heated discussion about about his profession. And I said, I've been hit 20 years I've been coming here. I said, and I said in, in, in less than a year I, I, I took care of X, Y, and Z. And what have you done? <laughs> yeah, you're malnourished and you gotta say you're exactly correct. And that's why my body's healing. <laughs> and in the meantime, since the last time I'd seen it, put on like 20 pounds. <laughs> but I mean, just that, uh, I don't know. It, my, my fault, because I, I went in for, I had an agenda going in, so that was my own. Yeah. It can be confusing. and. Uh, oh, I was not confused at all. No, they, they, they have like the proof. Here's the proof right in front of you. But in front you know me 20 years. You know what my body is. Steve, they you really can see one oh, thing. You're so blind. Your skin and bone, they don't care about that. They, they no. all, you're feeling freaking amazing and everything was working. <laughs> he said, all I care about is your bone density. I said, you don't worry about my bones. I'll take care of my bones. <laughs> it was a, what? I didn't expect that kind of pushback. I really didn't. Yeah. Some of them, you know, they, they want to show their authority. Yeah, there was a little of that there. Yeah. So, you know. Yeah, it, it you is always really find is. that, yeah. I, uh, and then I had the, I, the, the, the pressure test, what I told you last week, right? Yeah, yeah. Right? I, dropped, I dropped the pressures 10 points in a year. Amazing. In one year. Which, and he knows what I was doing. He, I, I told him last time, you know, mm. I'll take care of it. I'm doing this. I'm changing the lifestyle. Now they're in, they're in normal, what they call normal range, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What was the highest level? 24 and 22. I don't know where you're, that, that's, that's getting into trouble. That's where they want to start with the stupid drops. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, I haven't. Hey, Steve, we can just laugh. We're going to take them anyway, but. How long has it been since you went and visited your doctor? If you have one, I don't, do you have one? No, I don't have one. Where, 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 where's the last one? I don't know. How long has it been? That I seen. Uh... He has a big smile on his face. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want I to went, uh, well, my own doctor, the one I grew up with, uh, that guy there the last time was, uh, uh, It's got to be before 26 years old, so. Mm, wow, um, that's a long time. <laughs> but then I, I had to go for around. That's more than half your age. Yeah. <laughs> I never had my, uh, really a, my own doctor after that. Did you go to a doctor at all? I had to go for an insurance thing and stuff, but uh, it's not my own doctor. So I, I don't have a doctor. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't believe in doctors. Uh, use, yeah, use ER if you have to absolutely I, go there for whatever reason. The last time I've been to my doctor was uh, four and a half years ago. I've been doing, just just after I met him. <laughs> I've been working with <laughs> because I, I remember. Yeah, no, well, okay, go ahead. Yeah, I've been working with everything I've I've learned and researched and so on and so forth, and uh, you know, going to all sorts of what they call alternative here and there in the past uh, uh, chiropractor that, that had to uh, when i was doing the high fat man oh boy how my body was falling apart big time i was 
I was seeing him about once a month for a while. And uh, I, I told him, I go, my goal is to never come here again. <laughs> you know, and they're thinking in their head, oh yeah, this guy, I haven't been there last time. The whole system screwy. Yeah. When I had the surgery, I had the back surgery. I don't know if you remember, I had a cyst growing, so I had no choice. Yeah, yeah, you mentioned it. But the, the outfit, and I mean, they're a, they're a big outfit here. They're pretty big. They're, they're packed with people daily. When I went in, insurance made me take the uh, cortisone shots. Oh. Or, right? So I go in, it, it's, Thursday was shot day. So I go in to get the damn thing, and the, the, the table is just piled with syringes. So all the guy did all day long was give these shots. Right? I'm in and out in five minutes. $16,000. <laughs> That's all they did all day long. But there's probably eight or 10 physicians in this, in this business. It's a business. They also own the uh, physical therapy. They own it. I'm like, isn't that a conflict of interest? Oh, no, no, no. That's how it goes today. It's like, that doesn't make sense. So they own, they own the whole thing. Oh, yeah. They own the whole thing. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. I'm going to have to go make a trip to a dentist uh, Wednesday. I, I chipped one of my uh, fillings. That was, and the last one I did, it was maybe at least 25, 26 years ago. That was the last one. I, last time I went to the dentist. I had five fillings done over here when... Uh, we were growing up, uh, they had free dental in the school. They would line you up and they would drill, they'd be drilling pretty much everybody's teeth. Mercury. So I had five fillings done in school. Was never it, had, was it mercury? Yeah, never had any more done after that until uh, I uh, decided to get them all removed, the amalgams. And that was, uh, I started uh, uh, 30 years ago and I, I, I did it, uh, I did them, I did them all except this last one uh in in that in that year and then the, this one here i did a, a, a couple of years later three years later i can't remember uh so i gotta go back this. so what happened you chipped their tooth yeah it's chipped i was chewing on an olive pit on my dry fat i like to put some force <laughs> but hey it's 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 you know that's a long time for fillings don't last forever it's uh so you know you do the best you can, you know. So what, what are you going to do? Put another filling? I yeah, have them repaired. <laughs> what am I going to do? <laughs> you do what you do the best you can. Like uh, once they're drilled, you know what I mean? You can either pull them or you uh, do the best you can. Use the best possible materials with the least uh, effect on us, right? Mm -hmm. uh, definitely amalgams, like I said, 30 years ago. I got handed a book about the amalgams. And uh, there's a dentist here in Toronto. She was uh, doing uh, mercury-free fillings way back then. And uh, that's where I went. And she was like 20% more expensive than all the other dentists back then. I can't imagine what it is now. <laughs> the prices are ludicrous. Ludicrous. It's just like, wow. You can go take a trip to Mexico and do a few teeth. And it'll still be cheaper. It's just crazy. But, so take care of yourself as best you can. And you can avoid all this stuff. Uh, but once they do work like that, man, if it's a small feeling, um, you know, um, I've heard some people through fast, they had small feelings and, and uh, then they uh, went for a, a they were doing a lot of fasts and they went for dentist visits and the dentist goes, what fillings? I don't see any. They, they fell out and they regenerated, right? <laughs> Everything's possible. Uh, the teeth thing is, is a challenge some of us have, uh, you know, and that's a real, like I remember one guy who was starting to fast, his teeth were like chalk. To get into that state, oh my God! Can you imagine what the bone structure is like? 
it's not a good place to be. You know, unless somebody's eating junk food all his life and, you know, teeth are pearly white. Yeah, but they're, they're just disintegrating like chalk. I found that most people who have pearly white teeth have done work on their, like, work uh, cosmetic uh, on their teeth. Or bleaching yeah, the or whatever. I mean, um, so don't or dentures. <laughs> try not to compare yourself to every other person because uh, what we're doing is different. We, we're not touching anything with chemicals. And, we, um, yeah, it's, the teeth thing is, is a challenge. Like, you know, when you're, especially when people, you look at their eyes and they have weak genetics, you're going to have challenges with the teeth. And it's just the way it is. The best thing for th with teeth is chew on wild greens and the herbs, wild herbs or grasses. Uh, wheatgrass, body grass, wild grass, and, and herbs. Just, just chew them. You don't have to swallow them. Just chew them. Every day, grab some and chew them. Excellent for uh, for teeth. Uh, yeah, I, I love. I remember. Rock. I love the Miss Rock. Yeah, and clean your teeth with that too. It's a brush. There's uh, yeah. one guy I remember. I don't remember his name. He healed all his teeth by uh, eating just wild greens. You know, so. It's, you know, we can do all this brushing, this, that, and the other thing, but, um, what kind of brushing? it's, it's, it's much more simple than that. Like we can use some of those tools, but like getting your teeth cleaned and all that, uh, occasionally, I don't, I would not go to the schedules they recommend like twice a year or whatever. Uh, you don't want to be, you know, messing with the teeth a lot, but if you're, you know, fasting regularly and not eating every day and you're chewing greens. Um, and you you're have, maintaining uh, should, like the basic yeah. hygiene, which is like flossing every night. I like to floss every night and uh, and brushing. And if you can yeah. dry brush with this, uh, then it's one. You, you should avoid uh, most problems with teeth unless your genetics are really, really weak. Yeah, and avoid uh, toothpaste with How chemicals. How often do you recommend getting dentist cleaning? Uh, whenever you feel you need to. I wouldn't do it more than well, like once a year at the most, right? Uh, if you extend it once every couple of years, but uh, if you're doing the work, you know, chewing greens and stuff, um, in, in you know, fasting yeah. and stuff, you shouldn't have these problems. You know, like, yeah. you know, my teeth were, they had all kinds of uh, plaque buildup when I was doing the high fat. I'm going, what the hell? And I couldn't get rid of it. Actually, and just, it, just, it just shows it's a reflection of what's happening in the body. Your teeth are much better than before. In my opinion, I think it has to do with this. You're you're using this quite often, right? The yeah, I'm using that too. Yeah, like you're brushing. It really helps. Um, um, I wouldn't honestly. You, I wouldn't go to the dentist unless I feel like I really have to. Um, for me, um, everybody does whatever they want, but um, I feel you know I can tell the difference when I'm not eating well, even between fasts, and I'm overeating. My whole thing, my teeth and gum, everything suffers. I can feel it, the uh, inflammation, uh, but it's not only in the mouth, it's all over the body. And then when I clean up, especially when I get into fasting, especially after a month, two months into the routine, um, I feel my gums are better than ever. And uh, there is absolutely no problem. I, yeah, and uh, I used to grind my teeth at night. Do you have, we have a link for this? Mishwak? Mishwak. In the, yeah, on the mass shop. Fest shop you'll see a link it's called mishwak this one here is actually it's neem mishwak this is a neem but um, it's a similar idea right? yeah this you neem mishwak uh, mishwak's a different uh, tree uh, but, uh, yeah uh, you can even use uh, what was that other guy that got uh, was it white willow or something I can't remember There's a few, you can probably use pretty much anything mm -hmm. uh, it really helps but uh, if you want to purchase them you can purchase them they last quite a while. <laughs> these have been it's very used. simple. These have been used you know, since, you, just, uh, you know, Muhammad used just, to use them. So that's over yeah. a thousand years old. You just play with it, you know, and just clean your teeth. And it cleans it really, really well. You know, inside, do it all. It's, uh, you know, I brush morning, evening. I don't put a lot of fuss into it. Um, animals don't brush, you know, and the uh, ones in the wild, um, if they have, if their environments are not uh, destroy, destroyed or taken away, they don't have that many challenges. When man moves in, uh, you'll see problems in teeth in the wild, and, and that's uh, how animals end up dying. They can't eat properly and stuff. 
so yeah it's everywhere. it goes back to the diet so and also how toxic the body is based on your history of eating you know i would say yeah the teeth is is one thing that worries people um, when they start fasting uh, because all weaknesses come to the surface and that's going to show up uh when i started all my teeth uh got loose mm -hmm. and i bit bit down bit down on my teeth clamp i could feel them all move mm -hmm. yeah i used to have that and um it took about a good one to two years for sure and then they just started getting really strong uh grinding teeth that's a big issue i think many people have it's just I obstruction used to have, it's affecting the nervous system and i had it maybe maybe a month ago i over, like i ate i yes i overate it was a little bit more obstructive than a salad you know and i was i grind my teeth that night and my goodness in the morning i was like no this is not this is not fun um but it reminded me of where i come from because i forgot about it <laughs> it's a good reminder um and it's also you know it gives you a clue about the food again uh, uh these teeth can regenerate uh we're just we, we we need to um keep 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 that intent there and, and we're going to find the answer on how to regenerate teeth i remember one one of the students in cash uh, uh, was talking about how his enamel was growing back with uh, breathing in the gans the co2 gans so you know um and there was uh there was a dentist in the u.s he was using zinc and calcium i believe it's a certain i was trying to look for it again uh, a few months ago and i couldn't i couldn't remember couldn't find it i marked it but this guy was uh, regenerating teeth as well with the zinc and the calcium in a special way uh which is what we're one of the two we're using in, uh, with GANS as well, right? You can make zinc, you can make uh, the GANS, uh, the calcium GANS, and so on and so forth. Uh, Michelle with the calcium water, right? Uh, mm. She was uh, getting uh, her teeth uh, were getting much stronger. She was uh, uh, rinsing her mouth with the calcium water. Yeah, calcium water is nice, but not for. I'm, I mean, I wouldn't drink it unless no, no, just unless I'm really thirsty. I my, would drink it, and if I'm thirsty, it means I'm backed up. Yeah. With tanko breathing, of course, with tanko, your, your energy exchange. The, once you understand without energy exchange, nothing happens, then you're on the right That's why, you know, when we say, what are your, 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 your number one and two tools is breath work and enemas. They're one and one, actually, they're hand in hand. You can't, you can't stay without those two foundations. You, you need to implement that in your lifestyle. You, know, you have to be clean and you got to continue working on your, on your breath and, and keeping the CO2. Uh, built up uh, it makes a huge difference once you start getting used to it after a few months you practicing this you're going to see a difference it is it's just the way it is <laughs> co2 is necessary for energy exchange that's why your body creates it it's not a waste product like we've been taught get the old way of thinking out let's bring in the new understanding even though we don't fully understand it we're opening up to uh to this new understanding and and th this is the beauty and 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 uh and we'll, we'll, we'll be able to expand on, on this new knowledge that we're uh able to tap into uh but emo emotion is a big player off as well on teeth and so on and so forth um what is it on uh, louise hey hey this was gifted to one of my friend's mother she passed away mm. uh, not too long ago but uh, a month maybe i think there's something about teeth in here i remember yeah there should it, be. Uh, you can get this online I mean, we've, uh, we've shared it yeah. um, yeah. teeth represents decisions problems long-standing indecisiveness inability to break down the ideas for analysis and decisions uh, that's the uh what is that 
That's the problem cause, and then the new thought pattern. I make my decisions based on the principles of truth, and I rest securely knowing that only right action is taking place in my life. Mm. Louise, hey, she passed away a few years back. Wonderful soul. Mm -hmm. Emotion, she understood emotion and how it uh, is the seed. And uh, uh, well, that's the, um, I think that's where we need to put most of our focus on the intent in motion. Um, the physical stuff, it's, it's a no brainer. Like all of you that have been doing this lifestyle, the actual physical day-to-day uh, -day things of massive fasting, it's, it's a no brainer. <laughs> you don't have to think about it. Okay, you have a healing reaction, a couple extra animals, this and that, but it's, it's the emotions that we see. What do we, what do we read and what do we hear all the stories? Emotions, emotions, emotions. And this is where we, you know, put our emphasis, our intent to um, bring balance to that. And like, as, um, as we're working on the physical, we're going to bring up the imbalances through the mental and emotion. And we're going to, ha we have the understanding now that we shouldn't be scared of it, but we embrace it and let it go, keep it flowing. And this is a challenge to get this information through to people and comprehend. Uh, people start going cuckoo, right? And then they start making up all kinds of things. Their body told them they have to stop fasting or this, uh, whatever, I don't know, all kinds of excuses. It's, I got your own face. Just to not face the, the mirror, right? The mirror of truth, which is looking in your, your own soul. And uh, the fasting is going to bring it all up. This is why all the spiritual gurus of the past yeah, I mean, yeah. talk about fasting because this is this is it. This is how you this is how you connect. This is how you wash mm -hmm. the veil that's been plugging us up from you know uh, connecting with that uh, the truth. Yeah, yeah. The uh, the higher uh, dimensions of uh, the limitless realms, the soul, creation, God, <clears throat> divine, all the beautiful, yeah. wonderful yeah. stuff. The nectar of God. I like to call it tapping into that wonderful nectar of God. Um, this is where it's all about um, um, the physical stuff. Okay, yeah, we stop eating, limit our eat, limit our eating, and keep cleaning. <laughs> yeah, just, I mean, um, you know, when someone says, "I, I, I," my body told me to stop eating or something. I mean, a plug the body will lie to you <laughs> over and over again. <laughs> you need to eat. Means, You're starving. Um, um, yeah, I mean, what I'm trying to say here is uh forget about forget about seeing fasting as a fast it's it's a lifestyle choose your lifestyle and stick to it for six months you chose it so you stick to it <laughs> nobody told you to do it but yeah so choose your lifestyle choose your face and do it and please avoid making excuses just do it you chose it so you do it stick to it Nobody forced you. Nobody told you to choose level six or one or whatever. Uh, you, you choose it. So it's a promise between you and yourself and has nothing to do with anyone else. Um, Sign a contract keep, to your soul. Peace yeah, counts, correct conduct. Be patient <laughs> and keep going and uh, uh, understand how healing works. So when you're going through healing reactions, it's not about, um, yeah, it's your life, your choice, you know. Yeah. Not your body's choice, it's your choice. It's your soul's choice. It's not your body's choice. So don't be a slave to your body, to your physical body. Um, yeah. yeah, you are the boss. You are in control. Yeah, be a control freak. It's good. Okay, Elaine. Uh... I, I honestly believe it's good to be a control freak. Seriously, be a control freak. Enjoy life. <laughs> Do it your way. <laughs> So you get your CP up, my teeth, uh, uh, my teeth are becoming amazing. My teeth were terrible two years ago. Extreme sensitivity, almost see-through. Boteco has helped me so much to balance emotions, so I'm more able to fast. Yep. Amazing. Yep. It's you, breath work. It's Spark. very important. Are you doing it like um, in the morning, in the evening? 
So, um, so I took a course and um, they instructed me to do it um, four sets, four times a day. Each set is 20 minutes. And on top of that, I'm checking out my breathing as much as I can throughout the day, just to make sure I'm breathing properly. Mm -hmm. Oh, you mean you took a Buteco course? I did, because I was following your video and I just wasn't, nothing was improving and I, I wasn't doing it right. So I thought, you know, I need to really figure this out because I was really, as you guys know, I was really stuck with cravings really badly and wasn't able to adopt any level of MFS for any length of time. So I thought I need to really get more into the tools. And I'm really glad I chose that one because, oh, you guys, it's making a world of difference with the cravings and all kinds of other things too. Um, yeah, I'm no problems anymore sticking to MFS at least nine days a month. Nice. Energy transfer. Yeah. It's so, not, it's not for, from, from food. We reach for food because of the emotions, but true energy transfer comes through the feels. So 20 yeah. minutes, four times a day. Yeah. Like one hour and 20 minutes. Yeah. That plus my Kalima every single day. So I'm pretty busy plus working full time and looking after my kids, but. And your husband. Yeah, and my husband. Some sometimes I get really stressed about everything I have to do, but I do it anyway because I know. You're not bad from what almost bedridden. Oh yes, I was pretty much bedridden by the time I found you guys two years ago, and now my teeth are getting so strong. Like that's an indication of everything. I, I'm just a different person. My nervous system is so, um, it's night and day. Okay, so I used to be terrified of germs, petrified. <laughs> now this whole coronavirus thing doesn't even cross my radar. And I'm comforting people. So, yeah, it's just I'm, oh, you guys, yeah. every day something more just changes in me for the better. Awesome. So thank you. Yeah. In the grocery stores, some people wearing masks. I'm going, oh my god! Yeah, these people just living in fear. Yeah, that was me. I was terrified. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You don't need to be living in fear with all the information available now here. Yeah. Nobody should be living in fear. If, if you're not living it, then it's, it's your choice. But yeah, <laughs> we have so much knowledge now. And, um, you know, we don't have all the answers, but man, oh man, <laughs> it's just awesome what, uh, what's it, what we can achieve, which there's no, no limit. Yeah. Yeah. Can I ask you guys a question about my long dry fast that I'm on right now? Okay. So I kind of went a little crazy. I switched to semi dry and I was alternating the shots and the juice just tasted so good, I ended up drinking a whole cup. Should I just break the properly or should I keep going? You know what I do you, sometimes? You can continue. Okay. What I do sometimes, uh, like I break my fast because I'm feeling it, like I broke uh, 32 hours uh, a few days ago. Yeah. Um, because I was feeling tired. Um, mm -hmm. Like I uh, started to feel really tired that I felt like, okay, if I want to do some work, I want to drink some. Um, and I broke it with the um, Master Fast Bubbly. And after that, I felt good. Although, yeah, if, if, you ha if I have the juice right next to me, I will be drinking it. <laughs> if I don't have it right next to me, it's fine. But the Bubbly did satisfy me. So I think, you know, like maybe, um, I don't know. Yeah, I haven't didn't tell Gino about that, but it's nice like if you drink the bubbly because it, it helps you, it helps your kidneys as well. It gets something moving out because the bubbly gets things moving, right? And then uh, yeah, the bubbly is very powerful. Mm -hmm. and then um, um, and then maybe wait and see maybe an hour or two if you're okay, then just go longer, I guess. You know? Yeah, like with the, you, 
he went into kind of a semi in back in the dry, no big deal. It's kind of a semi. Okay. You go back and forth and whatever. All is well. Okay. As long as you stick to all the basic principles we have, all mm -hmm. is well. You know, uh, starting the, the dry and ending the dry is even more important, right? Mm -hmm. it's it, you know, it's, uh, this is the lifestyle and we continue. Mm -hmm. uh, there's so many uh, variations that we have. It's really, if you look at the whole layout of MFS, there's, it's infinite and how you can uh, vary things to make it work for you. It's infinite. Mm -hmm. you, know, um, uh, it, you know, now it's much more in detail the way Rana laid it all out, but the information's always been there. It's just uh, people didn't have the creativity enough to understand that, you know, how to make it work for them. They want, they want it spelled out in certain ways, but like, there's, there's so many ways you can do this. I mean, it's thing. good. It's good to be accurate. It's good to follow the details. You know, that's great. If you can do that, please do, you know, like uh, we don't want people doing mistakes by not following the protocol. It's good. No, the basic principles of the protocol are simple. Yeah. We squeeze, we wash, we squeeze, we wash, we squeeze, we wash. Once you understand that basic, simple concept, you, you, you know that you need to move out the obstructions every time you squeeze and every time you fast. That's it. That's all you need to know, that basic, simple concept. Mm -hmm. So anytime we run through challenges, what's happening? The body needs to move something out. So let's assist it as best we can. You know, herbs, enemas, more breath, breath work, blah, blah, blah. We do all the basic stuff. And it, it will get through it. We always do. And when we do, we always come out strong. If you haven't noticed. <laughs> we always, right, Elaine? We always come out strong. You mm -hmm. know, the month's going to go by, a few years are going to go by, but we always come out stronger. And you refine and retune and, and you work on it so that you will be empowered with less and less and less as the years go by. Because you're retraining the body to remember how to live on fields. It's, it's, that's all it is. All this pranic stuff and breatharianism, this, the whole, what we are having in this realm of MFS has, it's a complete uh, lifestyle where you can live on, completely turn yourself around, move into uh, liquidarian, breatharian, what are, it's all intertwined and it's, it can be done simply, safely, and effectively that, uh, that's, that's, I haven't seen anything else out there in, in 30 years I've been doing this. There's nothing even that comes close. <clears throat> People will try to mimic what we've done after we started sharing this information, but it's five years ago, almost five years ago when we started sharing this, this information was there. Arnold Eric's book was uh, a basic foundation but uh, it didn't have uh, it didn't have all the fundamental uh, uh, tools that we now have available. And um, even though he wrote that mar miraculous uh, uh, formula, B equals B take away vitality equals uh, power take away obstructions, um, I don't think he was able to, he, he never got to the point to really um, understand its true potential of what he wrote. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Because he ended up dying or they killed him probably more than likely. <laughs> but I mean, that, that formula. Job. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, you know, but his that's emphasis what started. was not too much the fasting. What? His emphasis was not too much the fasting. It was all the fasting. Yeah? Of course. Fasting. Yeah. When you hear the mucus's diet, you hear you you think food usually. No, transition and moving cleaner and cleaner and less mucus and more fasting. So, but like I said, he never uh, was able to fully. Um, yeah, like now we have the plasma pudding. It to its true potential. There's a, there's a one sentence in there where he talks about he uh, he he knew there was a was there a caterpillar that gained weight with just air, so mm. it was there. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It was there. That's like vegetarianism. Yeah, <laughs> and because air is the only uh, uh, source of, uh, in this one of the main sources of, in this realm that we use air, uh, not oxygen, air. And uh, we exchange with that field, uh, but um, 
um, as we um, learn to breathe less, um, if you look through the breatharian world, um, there's people claiming that they don't they don't breathe for days. You know, look at go look around. So if you go look in the old uh, yogi Vedic stuff, it was all there, the information about breathing less and so on and so forth. And yogis have done feats of getting themselves buried for several days because they were able to uh, master the breath, meaning not breathing. Yeah, it's amazing. You start, you start breathing, uh, get, uh, um, getting the exchange through the skin instead of taking in breaths, mm. right? Um, I remember in the Barden books I have, uh, Franz Barden, uh, he talked about that, where you learn to take in, he talked, uh, said breathing, but we know it's fields now, it's nothing physical. It's actually a field interchange, exchange. And uh, once you, 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 you uh, consciously uh, look at things in that way, in that sense, like we talk about fields, forget about matter, uh, and more and more implement that and, and, and keep uh, it consciously in the forefront of yourself whenever you look at things and, and, and how things work, more and more you start to believe it. And uh, in, living this lifestyle, uh, you will start to believe more and more because you're, you're going to see it. <laughs> What's happening because less and less things you, you consume, you start you know, getting more and more energy. Yeah, and you so prove on it so to yourself. So it's, 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 it's you know... Uh, Rushing into a, a breatharian lifestyle, I haven't seen anybody be, been able to rush it myself. And um, there's lots of claims out there. Um, Our liquidarian lifestyle, yeah. I feel like take your time. Lots of claims. Yeah, you don't you don't need to be liquidarian, or I mean, maybe one day if you want. Right. Just it's available you, for, just because you feel good fasting. Shouldn't doesn't mean that you have to give up all, everything, all the food that you have eaten all your life. You know. Take your time. Learn. You know, like just, you know, as once you've done this for, you know, a few years, um, you know, five, ten years, whatever, um, you know, you'd be, probably be down to eating, you know, one, one, two meals a week or even less than that, you know, if just for having fun, you know, so you can um, still socialize with people if you like or whatever. Or um, experience. Or you can be even, even less than that, right? Um, it all depends on where you're at. Some people are, you know, then they're, they're not going to ever give up food, and it's, it's okay, no big deal. It's, uh, I mean, we haven't given it up, so <laughs> of you, course uh, it's okay. <laughs> when you, uh, when we, you know, when we look at the, the, this planet, if everybody consumed 50% less food, my goodness gracious, what a world! Complete, massive change would happen. It's, uh, so much less impact we'd have on this planet uh, this, of destroying it. And um, um, if, 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 if it did go that way, uh, what would happen with this would be big, massive changes. And it would, it would uh, go less and less and uh, we'd be, uh, you know, um, uh, less polluted thoughts and so on and so forth because you're not uh, obstructing uh, the, the uh, physical brain. The more we obstruct, the more polluted thoughts we have. It's so simple. Yeah, but uh, uh, if it was up to me, every politician would have to be uh, uh, have to go through fasting. you know fasting cycles and so on and so forth. As a life, <laughs> as a lifestyle, not as an event. <laughs> uh, as a lifestyle. Who, who wants to listen? To, who wants somebody to rule the the, the people when they're all plugged up, yeah. constipated to hell? Yeah. First, they have to like. Um, um, I would say. Uh, two years of living at a minimum of level four, <laughs> you know, <laughs> a minimum for two years to clean up a little bit, so you don't they don't go through the emotional turmoil while they are doing the work, <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then after that, um, yeah, at least yeah, level four as a lifestyle. When, when you look at things that are happening out there in the news, and you go. Are, is it, 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 are minds that polluted? Like you, you scratch your head. Is, it, is, is this really happening? Is this, is this fiction out there? And it's just like, it's unbelievable some of this stuff. It's just like, wow. Holy jeez. Be the change, guys. Be the change. Be the change. Let's put that motion intent. Peace, balance, correct conduct. Keep that focus. And, uh, you know, we're not perfect. We're going to make mistakes, whatever. But 
we continue and we continue and continue. We get, fall down, get up, continue. Anybody else want to talk? We've done enough blabbing here. <laughs> Brittany, I can only stay on until 845 tonight, but I'm glad to have caught this. This feels like my family now, and I'm grateful for all of you. Thank you, Brittany. You got 15 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Yeah, how is everyone doing um, with the lifestyle, living? Elaine, you just said you did, you're doing nine days a month. Yeah, so I made a commitment to myself in 2020 that I would do a minimum of nine days a month because I was having such difficulty settling on a weekly. And then, you know, I just kept putting it off. So for some reason, I don't know, it just worked and it's getting so much easier. And now I'm finding myself while well, I do my 24 hour dry a week and it's easier if I do MFS the day before. So there's my two days a week as well. And it's just becoming easier and easier. Thanks. Yeah. Mm. So it's, oops, I think someone else. Yeah. So you're doing every week, you're doing the, the um, yeah, yeah, every week you're doing the, uh, uh, the weekly dry, right? Yeah, yeah, every week I'm doing the weekly dry, and now I've started um, doing um, MFS plus one day a week, so that's two days a week. Two. Plus around the full moon, I do about nine days nice. yeah consecutive and yeah. Uh, when you're eating how is that going the eating days it's going really well because there's not enough time in between to veer too far <laughs> off um like so far in 2020 the only things i've had like i even remember i've had some olives i've had a little bit of avocado but other than that, I've stuck to mucus free pretty much. Mostly fruit. There's nothing mucus free, huh? <laughs> nothing <laughs> mucus free. Oh, okay, right. Okay. Uh, some food are less obstructive than others, less less mucus inducing than others. Um, but even the fruit less was, I mean, even the juice, you know, after a dry, we would drink the juice to have a mucus. Oh. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, so you're eating much cleaner and are you doing how many meals a day? One or two? So I, I um, only ever bring juice to work with me. Nice. Um, so I, I don't have any solid food before four o'clock. So um, I might try to cram in two meals, but that's usually a lot. So I would say like one big one or just one. So you're eating awesome. with, within something like how many hours? Three hours or something? Yeah, like four till uh, seven thirty. Yeah, I try. The whole yeah, good for you. Yeah. The whole mucusless diet is Thank a myth. There's no such thing. Oh, okay. It's are mucus for me, but you know, so get rid of the word of, rid of the word mucus because the body makes mucus to protect itself through levels of obstructiveness of the foods. So the more obstructive, the more mucus the body has to make to protect itself. So the least obstructive is the fruit, right? And we go up from there. That's the way I like to look at it. It's, yeah. it's much much uh, uh, cl clearer of understanding. Because yeah. this mucus-free diet thing is, is a misnomer. It's, 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 not, it's, not, it's, it's not correct. Yeah, in my, in my opinion, the mucus is um, and I believe that's what um, is in the mucus's diet book as well. Um, it's produced when the body is irritated by something. Um, it can be sure an infection, you know, like parasitic, well, you know, whatever. Um, and we release them in the form of mucus, you know, like when we release the biofilm and all that, that's usually parasites and worms. Even the worm is mucus, you know. Um, that's the mucosal layer releasing the mucus to. I guess because it's slippery, it gets it out, you know, it gets it out of the body. Chemicals, toxins, anything like that as well. 
Mm. So the body, when it's irritated by something, it will get it out in the form of mucus. You spit it uh, out like or it. through your nose, or any opening in the body, or you know, um, even uh, urinary tract uh, infection or uh, a vaginal infection, we release mucus as well. I like using words that make more sense. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much. Better I'm going to clean up my language. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we, because we, 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 you know, we, we've used all this old language and, and, and it's with the old thinking. And so we want to change it. So we, we don't go back to that old way of thinking. That's sometimes, all it is for me. You know, yeah. Sometimes we see that in the, in we, the board. Um, People using frequencies and all that. I don't want to hear those words. On the board, <laughs> on the board sometimes you see. Um, Raise oh, your frequency. Sometimes we see on the board. Like, Lower your frequency. I'm gonna. I'm Raise gonna, your field strength. Oh. Yeah, sometimes we see on the board people talking about the food. Um, how the food says mucusless or mucus free or. Uh, uh, and we know it's not, you know, especially when you do. That's what's out there. Especially when you do fruit combining, when you combine so many. For me, I, I, it's a big turn off. I would not touch it. I cannot touch a fruit salad. Like I would, I would eat a, any salad, vegetables before I eat a, a fruit salad. It's just a big turn off. I don't know. It, it's been like that for me since, for seven and a half years, and uh, sometimes you know, yeah. You get into disagreement with people about that on the board, but it's just uh, yeah, fruits shouldn't be combined. It's, it's any fruit shouldn't be combined. So is it fruits the best to combine compared to anything else? So might as well eat fruit instead of combining everything no, else. No, I don't think so. No, 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 no. no. Fruits are not the uh, best to be to be combined. No, no, no. Vegetables, compared to combining vegetables, may vegetables. be combined because they are not sweet. They don't ferment. Fruits, you want to be careful because they ferment. Vegetables do not ferment nearly as Vegetables much. ferment too, but anyway. Yeah, but not like fruits, uh, because they're sweet, Gino. Because they're sweet. That's the ferment. Uh, That's why people don't like fruits. Sauerkraut because is not are... sweet, so they make uh, the different ferments. They're not sweet. Why do they ferment? It's, it's, they're not making sense. I'm talking about the sugar here. I'm talking about the yeah. sugar, not the sauerkraut. Uh, That's that's the good bacteria, you know, fermentation. Yeah. That's why many people are against sugar because of the fermentation process. And yes, I get it. But you, if you don't know how to eat fruits, don't eat fruits. Or if your body is full of meat and full of uh, fat and you're eating fruits, the fruits are going to ferment. This is at least my understanding from seven and a half years with raw food. It, you, you, you have to be very picky eating fruits. Thank you. You guys, every single time I listen to you, I get so much. So, thank you. So I will erase those words mucusless out of my vocab. This is good. This is how we, just, I mean, this is how we talk, you know, like, come to the new otherwise we're not talking about it, right? Come yeah. To, come to the new understanding and uh, <laughs> you get a whole different picture. You really do. You know, food doesn't create mucus, your body does, because it's the food is obstructive. So it's, it's, it's a different way of looking at it. And it's more accurate from our understanding of blaming the food. Diets are futile. Fasting is the lifestyle. <laughs> <laughs> Brittany, <laughs> you got to go. Hi. Hi. Oh, you're you're all so beautiful. <laughs> so are you. Um, you know, it's because it's um somebody's birthday, so we have to go and like just meet them. I I actually, oh, I will, I'll show you really quick, and then I I should talk a little bit about. Um, I don't want to hear monkey mind. <laughs> <laughs> okay um we don't want to hear any monkey mind eh? okay so um can you find me so i um yeah oh man i when like it was like a like a time back i went back into eating um <laughs> my things but um 
I won't like stay with that. So anyway, I was getting back with like my enemas and stuff and I was, Oh, this is what I was going to show you. I made, I made her a crystal. It was an amethyst and I took wire and I, I let it teach me as I was wrapping it. And it was like, it was just constantly shifting the way it wanted to be wrapped based on what I did before. And then it like did a thing at the top and then I put a chain on it, but it has all these like little interesting pathways. So anyway, that was what I did for her. Anyway. Um, so, um, yeah, I was in a bad state. Um, I'm obviously I'm, I'm obstructed and it's basically a lot of it's like all up here. And so it's just all this like, you know, gunk and like with all the stuff I had in me, I realized, um, I would every now and then I'd have like a little bit of fruit or something like that, or I'd drink some of the juice. And I just realized I was like, I was like, you need to be washing because, I got to start getting things out because the everything was just loading up. So this morning I did a baking soda enema. I felt terrible this morning and I did one. Um, and it kind of sat in and it's like the body's so weak right now that it, um, it felt like it wanted to expel. And then I, I was holding it a little longer, but I probably should have listened to it and just like, let it just release the first time and then release more. Um, but I did release some and some like it was brown came out and it was like burning. It was just, you know, that, that stuff, just all that gunk that comes out. Um, and some got caught up and then what it does is it starts moving. It starts to move around and I just, I just massage and I just kind of just do breath work. And, um, then I washed a little with some cool water just to try to neutralize it. And then some of that came out, but then basically everything just kind of, a lot stayed and just kind of went. And I thought to myself, I was going to do another enema with baking soda, but it, it didn't feel right aside for me to just lay down. Um, cause everything was just swimming everywhere. And so then when the, in the past, when I would go and do another enema after that, it wouldn't even like want to expel everything would just kind of sit. And so I, I just, I just paused myself and I was like, okay, just leave everything alone right now. But, um, yeah, it's a lot of it's up here. It's the chest. It's there. It's just it's just obstruction. It's toxins. That's what it is. So I have to be cleaning it. Um, just obstructions. You got to move them out. And uh, yeah, follow the protocol. The body will purge. Yeah, and I'm I'm starting full again with like TNT and everything like that. I'll take the tinctures and tea. And I'll do my enema and I'll like release some and um, I plateau a lot, but I'm just going to try to structure it just throughout my day. And I'm going to try to colon wash as much as I can, but I realize with how weak everything got and um, when, when it got all blocked up and stuff, obviously over time, my uterus got affected over time. Where, where, where do you plateau doing what? When I, when I'm like going through the day and then like, I'll do an enema and then I'll do another one later and the body will, it'll release some of it, but then it will like, it'll hold on to it. And then I get really, really, really dizzy and like really just dis- trying to release something. Yeah. So should I just kind of like hold on with it and just let it do that and just, I, I mean, plateau, I would say like plateau is when you do something for months the same thing, and then no changes. I've never seen anybody plateau on that. Okay, yeah, well, it, that's the wrong. That's the wrong word. My my word was wrong. It was basically I just kind of hit a roadblock. Um, You're healing. It's okay. Yeah, and Where honestly, did you get that idea that you hit a roadblock? It yeah, it was. It's all just because of like when I when I dip down and stuff like that, and um, so what happens is. And I just have to kind of bite the bullet with this, but my biggest mistake that I've made, and I just have to be open about it, is I've gone back to obstructive eating or like. Yeah, you don't follow the protocol. Yeah. yeah <laughs> and stuff like that. And um, I have to basically go into my own space and just center myself, like rather than like following through and like giving into my emotions, because a lot of times in my environment, sometimes there'll be a lot of like electronic stuff going on or just like. Sometimes like a loud rock music going on and um, I feel like I'm too sensitive to that and the environment itself is um, I'm kind of like flying solo with this right now so around me there's just a lot of like 
weird perceptions of like what I'm doing and everything like that. And I kind of, um, I almost want to create a sacred space with myself. I want and to focus on that. Yeah. What was it? Then focus on, on creating a sacred space. That's, yeah, that's, that's what I want to do. And um, sometimes like, I've just gotten into, um, you know, just my own problems and just, it's hard. Like I feel sometimes like I'm not grounded. Um, cause where I'm staying, it's been like really, really helpful, but it's like, I want to create a sacred space and it's weird not being back at home. It's weird having like pieces of my life everywhere. And, um, I almost kind of feel like I'm, I'm, I'm kind of floating. Um, and want to create this like little centered space of my own and be able to be in this meditation like with my soul and just be in this like this um just tranquil relationship and marriage like with my soul and um right now it's easy to just for it to I'll, I'll like almost find it and hold it like dear and then it'll just kind of scatter everywhere and I have to pick up the pieces yeah, one day at a time, focus on uh, the now. And, uh, you know, today you do what you got to do and get through it. And tomorrow is going to be today. So tomorrow never comes, right? Yeah. And I feel like beneath all of it, I think the thing that runs me into the the problems is that is that not feeling grounded and then feeling depressed. Like, not because not of, like, needing to heal or things like that, but just not centered and not happy and realizing that I have to kind of weave all those pieces together and just find a way to balance that and stuff. And, you know, I, I made, it was just a post about the GANs or something like that. And um, I probably should have left it alone. You know, my sister and other people, it was all this retaliation, all this like judgment and condemning me and saying that I was this and that. And I, I it was, so I just had to disengage from it, but I finally realized and I, 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 I listen to you guys speak and I, I'm here and I'm walking this direction, especially since um, Jamie had left. And I know that if she found this, she would, this is what her and I used to talk about. She's like, there's nothing on this planet literally that just goes right off the, the soul in the field. She's like, we need to find that. And I wish I could tell her about that now. Um, but I realized finally that I'm never going to be able to run into the the arms of my family and be accepted by them in that way make me like right now and that this is more like my family um because i i feel at home here and i feel there's an understanding that my soul resonates with and everywhere else i go it's every you know it's conditioned you're, you're continuously looking out there i know i have to stop looking outside Looking in the ex in. no listen to me. Look go within. We just have a roadmap that we use and it works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you 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 know your family your family loves you and, and and you want to see that part. You know, yeah, focus on that part that they love you so much and whatever is coming out of them is um, inside. There is love. You know. Yeah. So um, focus on that. And what what, what and I yourself. To, through more challenges when you can't you're 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 telling yourself that you're having challenges with what you have now why put yourself through that yeah you're right you're right it's it's true what, what do you got to prove to anybody yeah you don't you don't have to that's why we we closed up the group and tighten it up and because out there it's it's a it's a it's it's, it's chaos strange. out there yeah it is Yes. To allow people to have some comfort, you, you know, think you, you 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 hear crap, man? In the last thirty years, how much I've had to hear, especially in the last five years, is it, it doesn't matter because they don't know what we know because we've done it and they haven't. Yeah, Jem used to tell me that too. She used to just say, "We just need to build the center, and we just have to the set the centered space and." hold it within and just create that exactly. that sacred foundation yeah. she's out there it's what she said and I, and I would go out there and she's she's like Brittany she said 
And she said, dear, stop it. You're walking, you're going to be walking through fire out there. Just disengage, please disengage. Like it's futile. It's, there's no point to it. And I, I've missed my family. I'd, I'd love to be there with them and being able to, you know, live this lifestyle and be amidst them, but it's not respected there. Like if I have to do enemas there, I'm not allowed to be there and stuff. So I can't, you know, I can't, it's just the. Are they going to kick you out of the house if you did an enema? My mom had just said to me, it was, I think probably because when I wasn't doing well and then it wasn't like per se working from her perspective. Your parents, both your parents Italian? Yeah. Mm. yeah. And um, <laughs> they, yeah, they, they love me. They repress things emotionally a lot too. And then they, my mom, even years ago, when I wasn't on my prescription thyroid medicine, she gave an ultimatum that if I wasn't going to take it, I couldn't live in the house. I'm like, well, where am I going to go? Where do you want? Were they born in the U.S. or in Italy? Um, my dad was born in Italy, moved here when he was four, and my mom was born in the United States. Mm -hmm. okay, so they're people, but they're, you know, they, they've got all these walls about things up. Um, if I'm doing really, really well and I'm like, perfectly vibrant and beaming with joy or not going through any struggles or trying to find my way then like I, I it's respected and I can like do what I want there but if it's you know uh, whatever you do you want to find your way like if you live with them you'll have to be you'll, you'll have to also respect the fact that they don't believe in what you're doing yeah you have to understand that they are helping you by providing you the space you know um, yeah and whatever they're, they're they're caring for you so they're helping you and you want to respect that okay they don't understand what i'm doing because they don't haven't been through what i have been through so yeah, their belief system is completely different so you have to give them that space as well and i guess just meet them where you guys agree you don't need to uh you don't have to tell them what you're doing they don't have like the details and they don't have to when you don't engage too much with them about these specifics they will not give you their opinion so you have to you know learn how to do it in a peaceful way with them and keep the love and and respect for each other yeah and i'm not there with them now and i've talked to them about coming back and they say well you need to be like completely better first and you know we have rules and regulations when you're here that there's certain things you can and can't do and um yeah tell them well this is what uh, i have to do and are you happy with it you have to make the decision you're in control of your life so tell them this is what i want to do and um if you're okay with it i'll move back and if you're not then I, I will just stay where I am. You know, we're talking to you now, and the way you write, it's, it sounds like you're on your deathbed. And you don't look like you're on your deathbed. So <laughs> you think, you know, we're all our own, own worst enemy. You, you create things that are just not true, and you put a lot of focus on them and bring them to life. And uh, if you would just, like I said, let that monkey mind go. Fuck. Yeah basic protocol yeah, everything is fine. embrace keep using the tools forget about thinking about your water's blocked and the parasites and let it all go it doesn't you, even you, you're not going to figure it out no matter what you do i don't care yeah you're even the obstructions i mean and you're doing the protocol to release obstructions so don't worry about them you're doing your best and that's all you can do yeah and i think i think that mind comes out when um and like I, I see like in my face or when I stare in my eyes, they're very like yellowy or glazy. And like, I, I understand that. And you know, my hair, I mean, it hasn't grown since 2017 and it was longer then, but I haven't cut it. And so it, it's interesting, you know, to see what the body does when, and, but then when it, it frees up, it, everything starts changing. You, you build a new body and, um, when I don't follow the protocol and I go back into the things I shouldn't, that's when I'm in that whole like mind perspective. Cause it's like, you know, you, you know, you know what you did and you set yourself back and you get the repercussions sometimes. Like I get these pains up here. I get these swellings and it's people so not around anymore. It's why, yeah. It's why people aren't here anymore. Because they've done stupid things. 
So this choice is yours. I mean, you know, you can you, you choose how to live or how to die. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we're we're choosing to thrive here. <laughs> you know, survival is what's happening out there. Pharmaceuticals are a big part of people's survival. Like seventy percent of the population is taking some sort of pharmaceutical drug. Um, uh, I don't want any part of that. Seventy percent. Yeah, it's crazy. All ages. Yeah, all around. They're prescribing psychiatric drugs to pets these days. I think so. It's just mm -hmm. like how how can you come to that? I I, I just I don't know. Babies. Like focusing and just doing what you know you need to do. I mean, for instance, like the sugar or even like gluten and all these things are just overdoing all like, or Italian food or things that like you just, I can't do it anymore. You can't do it. Just suck it up. You can't do it. You don't want to do it. Why would you want to do it? You know? It's There's the so many beautiful, simple foods that you can enjoy and not have to go into the high obstructive sides. There's so much. There's yeah. all the fruit kingdom, all the green leaf kingdom. All the non fruits, there's just so much out there. And I gotta follow the protocol and do the enemas because the truth is, if I leave things alone, my bowel doesn't work anymore. Everything sits up here. So I need to follow the protocol and it'll come back. It comes back, you know. So have you chosen your level for the next six months? Let's, let's stop now. <laughs> I, I would want it to be full. I would want it to be full or level six or five. Um, okay, so uh, it's not gonna be full. Unless you're going to go liquid dairy, in my opinion, that's my advice. You can go full if you want, but I wouldn't advise. You don't want to hear you after. I don't want that. No, but I mean, you, you can choose it, but you, please be a liquid dairy after. You're not going to like food after a very long fast. We're, just, we're telling you right now. We have done it many times. You're not going to like food after a long fast. It's not going to be very healthy. So what, as a lifestyle for the next six months and after, Hopefully after you will go either higher or you stay where you are, but not lower. So for the next six months, what level do you see yourself living? I'd say, I would say level six. Okay, I, for life. You see yourself living like this for life, coming from eating every day almost and sometimes junk food. To level five. Level five, just because it's going to be too intense the other way. So I do level five, like two days a week eating, probably. Yeah, that's intense too, you know. Why don't you try a few weeks of level two and then, if, and then expand on that? Because, like, I have similar emotional challenges to you, and they haven't gone away on just level two, and it's not like I'm plateauing. <laughs> and if you're really serious about the lifestyle, you can move into five, four, five, six – Anytime later this year and following years because what if it's forced me to do and i am not good at it is not get so hyper focused on the mfs but look at the emotional stuff that is getting uh in the way of everything <laughs> so observing mm -hmm. yeah but sure i need to improve a lot on but um yeah we're all going to that <laughs> yeah, level, I, start level two <laughs> I can pick one down there or like towards the middle and when I actually don't am not being rebellious and I listen to my body and I start to take things in like I get I get tired and I don't feel good after I eat like ever and um why do you make that statement that that, that becomes your reality after food is nice sometimes yeah yeah you know, say, you know, when I choose to eat for fun, I enjoy it fully. And um, my body, you know, uh, uh, responds well with it. And I can eliminate it very well. And uh, I don't change the language. Or maybe if it doesn't, I want to improve what I eat. So it comes out better through me. I'm, I mean, that's what yeah. the levels are all about. To teach us how to eat. Trust me, I am still learning how to eat. Yeah. So I tell you, that's the biggest thing that's that's changed in me over the last six months is is I finally changed the language. Mm. And it's made uh, it's night and day. There's no other way. There's no other way. You can, yeah, 
when and when you and when you speak in, trapping you into the same repeating cycle and if you like speak in that lack sense you can feel it energetically like it it just wreaks havoc on you so it's not good to do that or you should you better to it's better to to speak words of light and compassion with your journey you know just as we were talking with elena about the little few left for words i don't want to be using the words everybody else is up there i don't want to be doing what everybody else is doing because i've been there we're we're into the new understanding we're in when you bring in a little bit of a new language you know the plasma level always flowing and the, the field strength we don't want we don't want to be um putting the words that were programmed in us and will trigger our old lifestyle that's what they do because worlds words are spells so if this is where if you can't understand what i'm saying here i can't make you understand it it's, it's, it is it is i find it with music too when i'm out there or, or things music and words and stuff like that it'll know, people program existed maybe with using these words oh it's all the same thing but hey that's your reality i'm creating mine because they don't understand the triggers with, with our pro, the program it's it's <laughs> It goes beyond anything that we can even comprehend. So let's change it. Let's move out of that old yeah. way. We're done with and that old way. It's not us anymore. That's where I center. And then I have to, I have to go, but that's where I center is like, that's what I've experienced. And that's what it feels home to me. But then when I'm like out there or I'm around things or just in general, like I get really, really, really sensitive and triggered by things like, or even like out places or when music's playing and, the talking and the 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 tones and like those kinds of languages and everything it it rattles me it really does and then sometimes you know you can't explain it really to people and you're not really meant to but i i can't you have a headset what you have a headset for your phone yeah i have a headset so okay. i should use try downloading the uh, uh frequency generator and uh, program at the 432 mm -hmm. hertz and it's going to go and put it on really really low and put your headset on when all this other stuff is bothering and let me know how you feel okay and it's the frequency generator is it an app yeah okay that's awesome thank you hertz, but set it at 432 nothing else okay that will help and Brittany, please focus on the solution. So now the solution we just mentioned, you're gonna do one of the levels. You didn't mention which one. Please think about it. Okay. Which level you want to do and stick with it no matter what. Not my body told me, my this told me, this, that. I mean, yeah, if you're feeling like something is really off, then, you know. Your body got you to this state talking to you, so don't listen to it. <laughs> Follow the protocol. I mean, yeah, I mean, you will have to be <laughs> smart. And you have to be responsible, of course, for your choices. But um, at the same time, please be patient and be consistent with, what, with your choice and do it for at least six months because you know what? That's where most people are not, you know, uh, successful at, at being consistent and being patient, at being, uh, you know, um, respectful of that decision that they made so, That's yeah you do. do your best and I, um, I, 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 like we've heard this you know i have to I listen to my body blah 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 i haven't seen that produce outstanding health and vitality in people i've heard this for many many years from people so that's why we say trust in your soul tap into your soul yeah soul is all knowing has all your answers for you but you have to learn how to tap into that and i found the easiest way and many people agree is freaking fasting clean up the gi tract and you will have magic coming through and in, in information magic it comes through it that's it, that's it what cannot happens. help but it, 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 if you unless you're it, you're not fasting. If you're fasting, it's coming. It's going to come through. And it can come to you even at level two. Oh yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. So you have to be. Yeah. As you're stripping the layers over and over and over. Start at level two. Every month, throw in a level three. See how you feel. Go back to level two, and continue for that for a while. Oh yeah. And maybe after two months, throw in a level four or five. 
See how you feel? Go back to level two, three. Just yeah. The food, stay focused. Fruit, stick it, maybe stick it only fruit. Fresh, ripe, fresh fruit. Uh, uh, bra, cooked. Uh, you can do uh, the botanical fruits, uh, squashes, tomatoes, zucchinis, all, just stick with fruit because you're so sensitive, your body's uh, going to use, uh, going to get rid of uh, fruit easier than any other foods. It, it'll move, there's nothing that moves through you easier than fruit. Fruit is the easiest yeah, for us to If you can, stick with fruit. So, if you can, stick yeah, if you can, if you want a salad, okay, have a salad, but it's a lot more work, especially in a sensitive body. Even me. If I eat um, more on the green side and I, you know, less on the fruit, my body right away slows down. And this is because I'm, I'm very sensitive. Fruit, if I don't have fruit, man, I mean, I mean just greens, no way, man. My body slows way down. So, yeah. you know, you, you need to learn to listen to that part of the body. Um, once you start, uh, uh, you, you bring it to a level of, um, you know, less obstructiveness, mm -hmm. and it'll be uh, giving you uh, clear answers. Mm -hmm. But yeah, when it's obstructed, it's going to give you all false, all kinds. It of does. It it goes. It goes all over the place. And when it wasn't balanced, like way way back, it just kind of. It was just intuitive, and it's it flows. And then you know, synchronicities happen around you. Life is like a song, and <laughs> we'll make it happen again. The body knows what to do. Remember that right. the body knows what to do when you're in a fasting state. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you mentioned that you had a good time in your life where you ate properly. Why aren't you not why are you not doing it now? Go back to it. That's everything we say. How about this? It's really hard for all of us. It's very challenging for most people. Let's focus on sharing positives from now on. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. Seriously, I I would love to challenge myself to um for that because it's not easy. But let's, let's do our best to focus on so no more I used to do this and I used to be blessed and I used to be happy. That um, doesn't matter right now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Positivity and perpetuity. Perpetuity. So <laughs> I do have to go because Okay. You to... Ciao ciao. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing. We'll see you soon. Okay. Bye bye. bye. Uh, Darina, who's this? Somebody new? Yeah. Steve, how are you doing? Good. Good. Very good. Awesome. Right back into the, right back in after the two days of eating last week. Very easily. Very easy transition. Nice. It gets more and more addictive not to eat, right? Yeah, I want to go long, but you know, I committed oh, to no. fasting. Fasting, yeah, fasting. Eating's is nice, but once you, <laughs> yeah. the feeling of uh, when you're on the fast. Yeah, the Freven, you know, I think last week, week before, I finally made the transition to, you know, nine, like 90% fruit instead of. That was still heavy, way too heavy on the vegetables. Yeah. Does it notice the difference? Huge difference. Yeah. How are your hands? Good. <laughs> Everything's good. <laughs> <laughs> it's too warm here, so I go. <laughs> I can't tell with, with the cold. It's, it's not been cold here at all. Just a couple of days. No, oh, everything's good. Couldn't be better. But I, you know what? See, I could, could be better because I still overeat. I st I'm still overeating. It's easy. Even yeah. with the food, I still overeat. Easy to overeat. Too yeah. long of a window. It's probably like six hours. We're, we're addicted, man. Yeah. You could reduce it, huh? Do your best to reduce it to three if you can. Yeah, it's, it's coming down. I mean, when I first did it was eight, so you know, six is better. <laughs> yeah. 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 Some days you will have You're only eating days, but... a couple days a week, right? Yes, two. Beautiful. And I change, I changed it this this week. I I backed up so tomorrow, that because I want to go dry on on Monday, but I don't want to be eating and going into the drugs. Right, right. Yeah. And um. And I think I'm gonna try like five days. Mm -hmm. Right. 
but semi dry. Try a watermelon. I've had my third watermelon today, and they're just fantastic. Nice. When you have good fruit, it's easy. Yeah. 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 That's the challenge. Yeah, I didn't know that. Watermelons, you can only ripe ripen them on the vine. They do not ripen off the vine. Right. So all the other fruits, a lot of the other fruits will ripen off the vine, but then they go, they pick them too early and they go. Mm. A lot of the mangoes get are rotted before you, they even ripe. So, so it's the first time I found watermelon this time of the year that's really good. So it's, wow. it's helping a lot. Great. It's helping a lot. Yeah. But yeah, I, I got I got to close that window. I know that I got to cl close it down. Yeah. I know for sure, it'll be easier once I'm out of the house. Yeah. yeah. You know when keep busy. Yeah, it's just not enough to keep busy at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, I mean, uh, it will get deeper. I am. I have no doubt about it. It will start. Well, I thought of changing the, the eating days into the middle of the week. Are you doing two consecutive days? Yes. Yeah, that's better. Yeah. I tried breaking them up, but that's. I never got back into the body. You know, I never felt uh, that. Yeah. I never felt cleaned out enough. Slows things down, yeah, for sure. Because yeah. it takes about at least a day or two to get back on, you know, to the elimination. Yeah. For me, it takes me two days to get rid of the food. Yep. After one day of eating, it takes me two days of colonics to get rid of the food. And then I start, <coughs> thinking, okay, yeah, now I feel clear and I feel back on the full master fast. Thank God I have the Kalima board. <laughs> oh, I know. I couldn't imagine. I just couldn't imagine it. I don't know how it yeah. to get the food out. And then, yeah. And then uh, the dry. Do you feel the dry? Do you feel it's deep? What's that? Do you feel it's deep, the dry? Yeah, oh yeah. Okay, so so yeah, so you're feeling it. So it's pretty deep. It's not like mass full, like uh, long massive fast. No, I know, but still. You want everything? <laughs> yeah, it's still, no, it's still the ego because I still haven't attained the 108. I know what it is. It's just the, my ego. But you know what? When you do the monthly or five-day dry, you're going to feel it. Oh, yeah. I do. Yeah. Yeah, you're going to really... Yeah, the deep. And you will release stuff. I mean, yesterday was it? Oof. But before yesterday, the smell was like, wow, what is this? I don't know what, what came out. Yeah, of. it's definitely getting a little more odorous, that's for sure. Maybe. <laughs> and it's deep. It's not food, that's for sure. It's, uh, it's like from the liver. No. It's black. Yeah. It's black. But yeah, so that's been... It's just been, it's, it's, it's becoming so much easier. The, the, the swings are so much 
so much less. I just got to close up the window. It does take time, doesn't it, to, uh, yes. to get the swing yes. down and to find your balance between fast and rear? It does, yeah. Yeah, well, it was like, what, Christmas time when I really tried to start the, when, I, when I broke that last fast. So it's, and so they've had a couple of weeks where it's become, you know, with, with ease or easier. So that's, you know, almost two months. Yeah, it does. Yeah, to, two, three months to start. Yeah. To start and be consistent. Because you can start, but you fall. All the time. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing the level five, six. These days, more five. Um, so I'm eating two days a week. And it's fun. It's good. Um, playing with the food. Um, I'm eating more than fruits, other stuff as well, but it's uh, vegetables. And if I play with anything, it would be more like chickpeas or lentils, just to try new recipes. But they're much cleaner. There's no oil. Um, no, I haven't had any oil. I have no oil. And oh, yeah, the oil. Thank God, no, no more. So I haven't touched yes. salt. All the you put oil in, it's like you get hit by a truck. That and the salt. My, my freaking calves, as soon as I put salt in, they just blow up. Yeah. I, I put a little bit of ocean water, and it's not nearly as bad. It's like, not it the doesn't, same as doesn't, salt. Yeah, it's, it's fine. You know what I found? That, that's like, like I, I, I did some uh, steamed squash, and then tonight I steamed a little bit of asparagus. Just a little bit of apple cider vinegar. Yeah. Mm, nice. Really makes a difference. Yeah. Today, I, don't, I, don't, I don't want that, you know, I don't, I don't have the craving for the salt. Yeah. Nice, nice. Yeah. 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 So it's helped. I fermented some, um, I don't know how it would turn out, but some uh, artichokes. I was always interested to ferment them. And today I experimented with that. And it was um, mainly apple cider vinegar because I'm not using salt. And I put a little bit of washing water as well. And some herbs like uh, rosemary and oregano and garlic, fermented garlic. Good. So we'll see how that goes. I think it's going to take like three. I have a friend who does a lot of fishing, so I, I saw him Thursday. He's going to get me some ocean water from out. Nice. nice. Oh, awesome. Yeah. yeah. You're going to do that when you get to let me know that I, for the plants. Yeah. He starts going out about a month from now, so. <laughs> nice, nice. Awesome. And uh, yeah, so so play around with you know, I don't mind playing around um, as long as I'm not overeating. Like I ate within two hours today, fruits and then some vegetables. Um, it's fine as long as I'm not overeating. So I'll eat a little bit, maybe I'll put a little bit more, and then I need to stop. <laughs> I, just, I, li I liked it so much better when I was on the longer fast because I didn't have to think about it. I didn't have to think about, <laughs> oh, I'm going to eat on Saturday. I got to go buy something now so it's right for Saturday. We get spoiled. Because I could just do nothing and just follow this protocol. <laughs> I know you get spoiled, but <laughs> just think about when you go back in your, in your head when you were eating seven days a week. Oh, God. <laughs> How much work is that? You don't even like you can't even comprehend it now. That's a tremendous amount of work. So. Tremendous amount. <laughs> yeah, like uh, Besides, we don't have to go to the grocery stores today because it's getting really crazy out there in the stores. Yeah, they're wiping everything out down here. I see they're they're hitting you guys up there too. The Costco's are incredibly busy. Yeah. How come people are coming out with pallets of toilet paper? It's like, yeah, it's a, point, it's a crazy toilet it's paper. Crazy. The last thing you would ever need. <laughs> <laughs> oh, whatever. Yeah. I think because I was, I follow the geopolitical stuff too. I think by the end of this year, you won't recognize anything. A lot of changes happening behind the scenes on everything. Yeah. It's going to be an interesting next few years. Sure is. So, 
We're doing the best we can. That's all we can do, guys. But people aren't even prudent. I mean, that's that's the whole. I don't know about up there, but to, even in the meetings. I went to a meeting Thursday night, and everybody's trying to shake hands. Like, no, just you know, we're fine. How you doing? Mm. We got this crap all around us. We don't need to be touching. Mm. You know, I'm not afraid of it, but be prudent about it. Mm. It's crazy. Yeah, don't need extra loads. No. Not at all. Oh, I have no fear of it. I, I don't believe it'll ever touch me. I don't think it'll touch any of us if we're really on this if, on this lifestyle. No, and, and even if it did, I never got sick prior. Very rarely. I would get a I would get a cold once in a while. Very rarely get sick. Hmm. I've been eating clean. I mean, obviously clean now. But even prior to to this, I was. I've been I've been moving on into this lifestyle probably for the last ten years without realizing. Growing your own food. Really clean. Yeah, just eliminating eliminating things a lot slower, but still eliminating. Yeah. And just never never get sick. It could be all around me. It just doesn't come in. Does getting sick exist? <laughs> well, there are Play. viruses. No matter what, there are viruses. Oh, yeah, yeah, just, are absolutely right but you guys have been talking about that and i've been a little confused how is like coronavirus or these like scary viruses how is that different from like cancer because people think it's a disease or you know like uh like you say an in infections and outfection but isn't well, that back there it's those... just the body trying to protect itself yeah a virus is not an actual living entity. It needs a host, the other cells, to be able to duplicate itself. So it has to be conducive for it to be able to uh, survive. So it's, it works the same as parasites and all that? So it's not real. You could say it's like a type of a parasite. I don't know, but they're, they're viruses because of the way they're structured. I don't know. It's yeah, not, they're, what I'm getting at, they're not. there's no sense worrying about those in any more than parasites, cancer cold flu I, I, I don't know not with the knowledge we have we shouldn't have to worry about this stuff right i don't i'm just curious uh, if it's any different no just keep yourself in a healthy a state parasite. well i think the difference with this thing is it's the media it's clearly it's clearly been freaking manipulated oh yeah for it's sure not a natural natural thing it's not a natural virus so and then it starts mutating it knows what it's going to do yeah do you think it's going to Especially when the second wave comes out, because that's going to be a whole other generation. Yeah, but uh, this, uh, I yeah. think, uh, was it SARS killed more people, the percentages that yeah. were infected? So far. So, so far. <laughs> so far. One, yeah, so we don't know. It, as I mean, don't know. But I feel this one is like is controlled. I mean, they, they're, I think they're giving vitamin C. And uh, they got yeah, lots of tools. They discharged so many people from the hospital because in China, because thousands of people, I think, already because uh, they got better. They get Man, you can't you can't trust anything. Any of the numbers coming out of China. Uh, some people got reinfected that they released. Yeah, you know, what's killing them is they're they're getting heart attacks because they were treated and the meds are, are weakening the heart. So then when they get the, when they get reinfected, they're they're having heart attacks and dying from that. Treatments are the biggest problem. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's the cause. That's crazy. It's crazy. We got it all around us where I live. All the surrounding states have it. A little bit older. We had two. We had two that just came in that just tested positive. A uh, hospital on the west side of the state. Mm. A nurse and a doctor, actually. Yeah, you know, you got the, the little GANS kit, so simple to make, spray yourself. You got ozone, take a little sniff of it, keep it going in the house. I did get that. I have that, the ozone generator. Yeah, there's mm -hmm. many things you can do, man. It's, uh, so do these, like, um, viruses, they get in the body, and then what are they doing? Are they taking over the host, or? They attach to a cell and reproduce. Hmm. Yeah. And uh, basically, when your immune system is down, just like with any other parasite, 
the, I mean, we have the good parasites and we have the bad. Yeah. We call them bad parasites. But the bad parasites will come into the body when, when the body is uh, backed up, in my opinion. And There's no bad. Have, they're, they're good. They're trying to help clean. They're all, uh, <laughs> but they right. The, 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 when your immune system's down, these, but you get the viruses, your body isn't capable of uh, getting rid of them. And so they start mutating. If your immune system's strong, they won't even come though. I think if your immune system's way up, they won't even enter. Yeah. So, so I mean, uh, if you looked at Wim Hof, he has uh, one of the things he did was they injected him with uh, a bacteria, and he showed them the bacteria had no effect. And they said, "Well, you're some kind of freak." He says, "No, give me a, uh, well, I don't know how many people, and in one week I'll train them and we'll come back." And they did, and everybody got through it, and the bacteria didn't affect any of them. Just through and doing his breath work. I don't know. My head just still spins trying to see how this is any worse than everything else flying around our air all the time. Because it's like 98% of people are so obstructed anyway. I just, exactly. I, I don't understand how Corona, like, I don't know. Maybe I'm just like delusional. It just doesn't, I don't buy into it. It's like, if I see it in a microscope in somebody, then I'll believe it. But it's like, I just don't understand. It doesn't, I can't compute it in my brain how it's any different than someone on master fast focusing on their parasites. It's uh, they're all the same, aren't they? Like, Look at it the same way. Just uh, we put the information there so you can be prudent, but you don't have to focus on it. So you have an understanding of family members, friends, whatever. I mean, here, man, you know, we can, we can help people out, whatever. Uh, otherwise don't put any thought to it and just keep the, the, the tools around and uh, be prudent. Be prudent. Uh, yeah. We don't know what's going to happen with this thing, how to mutate and how many people it's going to wipe out. We don't know. Uh, you know, we could, we could keep going, keep, you know, killing off many more people. We don't know. We don't know. So. I mean, I, I, we can get sick when we don't take care of ourselves, even, you know, between, uh, we fall off master fast. We can easily get the, sick. You're, you're going to see right. more and more of this stuff happening. Because the obstructive list levels of humanity is at its peak. most, yeah, peak point probably in its, uh, our entire yeah. existence of humanity. So that's but naturally these things are going to come. It's it's common sense to me, and you're going to see more and more of it happen. So cancer, does it kind of work the same way when it's mutating and with the cell stuff that you're talking about? Is it kind of the same similar process? Cancer is uh, when the body gets a certain level of obstruction and the cells don't have the information to reproduce properly and they start growing weird and starts growing yeah, so tumor or this, that, and the other. Again, they mutation, mute, right? A different type yeah. of mutation, right? It's basically yeah. uh, the body is overburdened with filth, so there's not enough of the information to it to reproduce properly. Then, well, the environment, this is how I see it, you know, the environment. Environments dictate outcome. Yeah. Um, if, if you can make a cancer cell easily by, for example, exposing it to, I think, radiation or something like that, the cell can mutate, you know, um, easily. There, there are ways in labs to mutate uh, uh, cells, you know, stem cells, for example. Um, uh, there are so many ways to mutate the uh, cells, and um, uh, virus. so so the cancer basically the environment is so toxic that the genes will change. This is how bad it is. That it's it's so toxic. It's like you know radiation or something like um, uh, the like nuclear whatever um, radiation as well. How it mutates some genes. Same thing. Um, so you, the body is so toxic that it will mute it. And I believe everybody has cancer. This is what I believe. I believe uh, it's impossible that some... I don't believe in cancer. <laughs> yeah, but I believe everybody <laughs> would get cancer and mutation to a vari variable degrees, you know, and some point in their lives and different times because we have so many cells. I mean, of course, some of them are going to get mutated because the body is not perfect. But well, We're being bombarded strong? with all kinds of stuff. Are you strong enough to, you know, to, it, it, to, to are protect you, yourself? Are you in a state 
where your body is able to purge everything the body cannot use, meaning cells that could not form properly, for other obstructions from the environments, food, etc. That's the key. If you can continuously keep the body in that state where it can purge continuously and regenerate the new cells perfectly, you never have to worry about anything. No, it's not going to be a perfect like that, black or white. Yeah, it's, it's that simple. It's not the, that. It is that simple. The point I was making is I don't think, okay, coronavirus, it exists, but if that doesn't get you and they invite, invent this perfect vaccine, it kills it all, whatever you want to call it. That's not the only thing that's going to take you out. If, if you were susceptible to the coronavirus in the first place, you're going to manifest all these other conditions eventually in time, right? It's, uh, that's what the point I'm making is. Yeah, there's a lot of nasty stuff that's going on behind the scenes. Who knows? Oh, yeah. Not- what do they say? The, the most susceptible people are elderly, sick, weak immune system. That exactly. that's also applies to everything else. The flu kills way more people a year than this coronavirus. So common flu that's my point that's what yeah. exactly it's the virus as well right um elaine will asana help protect the virus do the heat healing off uh well what does the first thing body do it goes into uh, uh the temperature right it creates a fever so yeah saunas uh, could be helpful um i don't know exactly about you know this certain virus and so on and so forth you can do i mean it's best to focus on the major obstructions not how to kill the virus yeah yeah, keeping the body in a state where the virus just no, not a, I'm not going there, man. There's nothing for me. <laughs> you know, I, I believe we're all exposed to everything uh, to variable degrees. Yes, sometimes mm-hmm. you may be more exposed to viruses than other times. They're or, everywhere. Or bad bacteria, or worms, or whatever. The question is, are you clean or are you backed up? You're clean, it goes. Okay, it passes through you. You're not gonna. It doesn't stick inside you. You're backed up. They live inside you because they're processing your waste you know they they feed on your waste and they process it which is actually good for us a stagnant uh, water what happens to it, it starts put- putrefying right yeah so you want things to be flowing and we're, uh, we're stagnant i like ellie tommy's flying through hong kong with no mask nothing just <laughs> he was he was talking about the entities in that too which is interesting you know it's yeah i like that mentality just it's not even in his reality, you know. Yeah. Put the information out there because um, most people are not living this lifestyle. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, we can help people uh, with that information. Even if they're in a you know, putrid state, we can help them. Uh, yeah. So Most people don't want to be helped. Uh, I, well, that that's for sure. <laughs> that's for sure. Um, no matter what they say, where are they? <laughs> right in front of them. <laughs> uh, yeah, we gotta have fun. We gotta have fun. If you don't have fun, you're not gonna you're not gonna continue. You gotta have fun. You gotta enjoy life. Um, like uh, you know. I didn't enjoy being in bed. I don't know if you did, Elaine. <laughs> no, I hated it. <laughs> because even lying down, I was in pain. Like I had this constant feeling of this creepiness. Like I couldn't stand being in my own skin. So I was always in pain. Not fun. No. I don't know. Like um, it's, uh, it's a weird state. Mm-hmm. And I went to the old age home and see one of my uncles uh, go in these places, man, oh man. Can help these people if, you know, very, very easily. It's just like, mm-hmm. they're just all backed up. That's all it is. So simple. Okay, so I used to work in a, in a nursing home as a nurse's aide. Sorry, Steve. And uh, one thing they had me do, this is so disgusting, was stick my finger up people's butts to try to get them to go to the washroom. And it was called disimpacting them. And I would have to do that as a nurse's aide. Ugh. So, you know, we're talking, what do they do? They're just injecting them with more drugs. To treat the symptoms of a cesspool. How do you do that? You can't. Mm-hmm. You can't. Yeah. 
You know, the fishbowl uh, analogy. What do you do if the fish is sick? Do you treat the fish or change the water in the bowl? Mm -hmm. <laughs> the medical <laughs> guys will treat the fish. They're not going to change the water. What are we doing? We're changing the water continuously. Mm -hmm. That's, it's, it's so simple. And you know, you hear people talking negative about enemas and colonics and, and all these people, I don't see the results that we're getting. I don't see it because I've done it. <laughs> I've been, came through all that. And it's just a lot of hocus pocus out there, but hey, you know, it's, uh, it is what it is. It's, you know, we don't, we don't know everything, but man, oh man, you know, with the little we know, we can help so many if they want to be helped. Yeah. Yeah. Gina, what, what you just said, you helped me reframe something. Like I used to think, oh, it took me so long to find Master Fast. Like I was sick for 20 years, but I'm actually flipping it around. I found Master Fast so quickly once I found this lifestyle. I didn't find any other fasting. It was right away Master Fast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ain't you blessed? Oh, yeah. So blessed. Oh, man. Yeah. I, I look back at my 30 years of all the stuff, and it was a blessing, but it was a long road. Even, you know, but now it looks like, you know, it's just like yesterday, you know, I just flashed through. But there was a lot happening. Um, and it's interesting. Uh, we've seen some people like yourself come through here, you know. Do, do an MFS, get tremendous benefits, and then go back to the other ways. And it's just like, yeah, okay, well, you know, everybody has free will. It's just like, okay, you know, like, uh, you know, you're going to have to find out on, on their own. I mean, um, you know. Yeah. I never had that sense that. Uh, like I never wavered in my, um, I don't know what the word is, like just trust. I had trust and faith that I'd be better yeah. if I stuck with it. Yeah, most people are looking for um, sh short term uh, outcomes. Uh, they're looking at um, quick fix. Not, yeah, but not the quick fix, but uh, things. Um, oh, they, uh, you have a meal and feel great, and uh, they're, they're, they're getting the analogy from a short time frame. I'm looking at my 30 years and what happened, because I put a lot of things to the test, and I didn't do it for weeks or months. I did things for years to find out what was really happening, because you, you can't see anything an absolute minimum three months before you start seeing something really happen, uh, you know, with the effects of it. But the long-term effects, you need a few years to get a, a really good idea and, and platform of what's going to happen. Because, you know, you got to go with the, uh, the cycles of the body, uh, the cycles of everything else in nature and so on and so forth. So, um, you know, the nine year cycle, um, that's when you're going to really see something happen. Um, if you look at uh, uh, fruitarianism, you look at raw foodism and those kind of things, um, the majority of people do not last long doing those lifestyles. You're a very, very, very small percentage will be going for uh, five, ten years or longer. Very small percentage, very small, minute. And you have to ask why, because diets are futile. That's why. And they could not get resolutions because they did not de-obstruct. It's that simple. Once you understand that, you know, that's why we're, we're, we're doing what we're doing. We're focusing only on de-obstructing, washing, de-obstructing, you know, all the other tools. It's everything we use is, to move out obstructions, nothing else. 
because we are not lacking in anything. And then once we have that understanding, my goodness gracious, we don't have to uh, fall victim to uh, we're lacking this, that, and that nutrition and all that other stuff and fats and amino acids. No, body will create anything it needs if it's uh, uh, obstruction free. And that's, that's the simplicity of it. And uh, if you look at, um, go back and search all the videos from the start and uh, all the uh, posts and stuff, I, uh, I'm saying the same thing using different words, just a little bit here and there. It's always the same principle, basic principle. Yeah, one thing I, I, I would say about Gino is that, you know, there are many people in the natural healing kind of field who are uh, open to, to incorporate meats and animal products at some point. And Gino, even if he experimented to, to eat any of that in the past 30 years, he, he knew it's not the way to go. He always knew it, like you, you, you ate fish, but you knew it's not the way to go. Like he would not promote fish. He would never promote fish. He experimented with it, but you, it's, it's um, which tells you he's very consistent. Um, he's patient and consistent. These are, yeah, qualities that um, he has for sure. Um, yeah, I haven't seen him promote any kind of eating. From the year I've been here, you would have it Just be aware. That's all. That's one thing that, that really attracted me. There was not. This is what you have to eat, and, and I, I've never heard that out of his mouth ever. Yeah, these are your options. How obstructive do you want to eat? Exactly, your choice. Choose. I we can't choose for you, and you're gonna have to make that conscious effort yeah. and understand what we're saying and how the body responds after we start cleaning it's it up. Thing, it's the same thing with, with, with me and the drinking. I, I, I had no chance until I, until I was, until my ability to choose was, re, was restored. I had no chance. Same thing with the food. Right. Once, once the knowledge is there, forget it. Yeah. That's it. Just, uh, now you can't, now you can't blame anybody. Now you can't point and blame. Cause now it's, now you know, right. Choosing it. You're choosing it, period. Yeah. And, you know, this is where we, uh, we have to look at ourselves and, uh, and when we have these uh, emotional challenges come forth, that's the biggest thing for people. And it's a big, it's a real big. Uh, so we work on it. We keep working on it. Yeah. There's nothing else to do out there. Um, I, uh, you know, um, there's, um, what's it called? Uh, a few of the people like uh, Bruce Lipton, Biology of Belief, and uh, Greg Braden, and uh, Joe Dispensia, you know, they're talking about uh, the fields as well. And they're doing it in a different perspective way. And there's miraculous things happening with people that are uh, doing that. Uh, but what's happening uh, in the long term? Uh, what's happening with that? Um, if you're still plugging up your body 24-7, your body's still going to have to deal with the matter. Right? So when we put ourselves in that state of the field state uh, and, and um, uh, freeing up the obstructions and the physicality it's at a whole different level a whole different level because you are in a place where um, it's uh, what the, what's the word I can use uh, the plaf is, is freely flowing in the physical, mental, and emotional bodies. There's nothing holding back. And that's why we see the miracles we see. It's 
nothing more. You just got to keep things flowing. We're uh, coming up to three hours. iPhones joined us again. <laughs> <laughs> iPhone, you want to introduce yourself? Some people don't know how to. Maybe on the phone you don't know how to connect. I don't know. Where? We can unmute you. <laughs> so, yeah, you know. Uh, this is it, guys. Keep uh, inspiring each other. Keep supporting each other. And um, uh, we have to just come to the reality that most of our family and friends, pretty much all of them, are not going to be doing this lifestyle. <laughs> so, uh, you know, if it is to be, it's up to me. Just yeah. you got you to gotta stay, you got to keep that that feel strength at a, at a place where the, I, I can't go back. I just got to keep going. I got to keep going. I got to keep going. Yeah. Keep, you know, keep that uh, thing like Elaine, uh, that memory of you being in bed, it stays there. It's in the memory. And just a, so it's a reflection that that's something that is not part of me anymore. And it's, you are where you are now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't ever want to lose that because I'm so grateful just simply to be able to walk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, just, it's awesome. Yeah. It's just amazing. Um, so we had a few, quite a few people that were bedridden. So they're pretty interesting. It ain't fun. No, sure. it's terrible. I was, I was getting uh, worse. I lost, I was losing my ability to walk for six years. And this is while my kids were young. Six kids, years? Six years. Yeah. So my husband had to do everything, the groceries, the cooking, the taking the kids out for six years. I missed raising my kids fully. Wow. Yeah. Was it fibromyalgia? Um, I was diagnosed with plantar fasciitis, but my the bottom of my feet and my legs started to seize up and become more more and more solid, like as if they were tree trunks. And I don't know. The only thing I can think is toxins were building up. Big, big legs on your leg. Yeah, yeah, just rock hard and in constant pain yeah hmm. yeah, yeah obstructions kidneys did you, did you did you go through cramping yes really bad when detoxing oh yes terrible that, that's the body squeezing out obstructions and people look at it oh you need potassium or this that and the other thing. yeah it's I've not used black. so much magnesium gel. Okay, I don't need that. Okay, good. Yeah, no, but, uh, you know, like when you have the cramps, it's not fun if you're putting magnesium over a big deal just to help soothe it because it's, it, it can get really painful. I've, I've had some, and I remember having to pull on my feet with all my strength to avoid the cramp. It was just yeah. like, holy mac, you yeah. no control. Yeah. That last year was the first year I did not cramp in, in the garden. Wow. Every prior year, and I mean bad, just like Tino's talking. Yeah, it's horrible. I mean, my wife wanted to take me to the hospital a couple of times. It was so bad. Yeah. So yeah. that's the body squeezing? Of course it is. Okay. The body knows what to do exactly when it's in a fasting state. Remember those words and trust in your soul. Don't trust in some guy with a white jacket that says you're deficient in something because we're in a universe that is fully in, in complete 
abundance. <laughs> There's no lack. No lack is a falsehood that's been brought into us in the money system and this and that. It's, 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 a, it's a program. We got we to gotta let that go. And we, we'll, we'll catch ourselves, you know, the more we put our conscious effort, we'll catch ourselves more and more in letting that bull crap go. Oh. You know yeah. what else happened to me a lot is um, like my feet and my hands would like lock up in, in a claw. Yeah. And that still happens. Yeah. So, yeah, but stretch, keep moving things. Yeah. Remember where you came from. It's, oh, it's only two years, right? That's yeah. all. You know, do all kinds the of The muscles, things. the muscles in here. Yeah. They get too short. My 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 uh, massage therapist was just telling me because I have some things with the hand a little bit, and he's uh, I was attributing it to arthritis. It's not arthritis. It's the muscle that's too short. So get the, especially this. Do this. Just pull back like this. Yeah. Start stretching these muscles out. It's all muscular. You can get uh, a rolling pin uh, on your arms. You won't be able to do your arms, but uh, your husband could do and mm -hmm. roll the whole arm. Okay. Like as much force, slight discomfort, and you can do your own legs. You can do your body. Just keep things moving. Mm hmm Because there's a lot to move out still. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and I'm not getting. I'm not going to get too comfortable. Like, oh yeah, it's been two years. No, it's only two years. <laughs> and also remember the. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't say that I have been perfect for four and a half years, or even now. Um, but you know, uh, you have to understand. I mean, oh, when I fell off, I felt so sick that I would not say that was healing. You know, when I fell off many times between long massive fasts, I fell off so many times. I felt so tired and so depressed that I would not count that as healing. So I would actually start from zero. <laughs> um, I would say now, and every long massive fast did feel the, trans I, fe I felt the transformation and now I feel the transformation, but like the real, I feel the real challenge and the real transformation will be when I am consistent. And if I fall, I get up the next day yeah. and continue instead of falling off for one or two months and eating crap and uh, damaging my body even more. Um, so I wouldn't count that. I, like, I wouldn't say, oh yeah, if somebody asked me, oh, you've been fasting for so long, I'd be like, yeah, but I have fallen off many times, really bad, uh, that I, I felt the damage. So I wouldn't. Um, it's all part of the journey and, uh, part you, of the journey, it, yeah. it doesn't matter. But I will be patient. I will be patient and I'm not going to say that, oh, I have uh, been clean eating for nine years. No, I haven't. It, it, or for four and a half years. You, I haven't been. You're never going to go back to decades of what you did before in, in a couple of years. Or a couple of months. Of not you may feel time. worse, but... Yeah, you're more sensitive. Because <laughs> you're more sensitive. You know, I mean, still, yeah, maybe I'm a perfectionist, you know, but still, um, um, I, I like to be realistic with myself. And uh, remember, I remember the falls. They were really bad. They, they were really bad. Um, so I, this just tells me that my journey might be a little bit longer, you know, because I, uh, I fell off many times, so more than nine years. Okay. I mean, who knows how long it takes for the body to heal. <laughs> mm -hmm. It really doesn't matter. Um, as long as you feel good today, better than yesterday, and, and, uh, you're looking forward for a better day, even tomorrow, then you're good. What else can you ask for? Mm -hmm. But be consistent. And that's the biggest challenge. If you really want to change yourself, it's not about going for a long fast or a long dry or just be consistent and keep going, moving forward. Hopefully after six months, you say, you know what, I'm gonna go deeper. Or you stay where you are. I wouldn't go much lower, you know, because it's just, yeah, you, you will start accumulating um, the obstructions again. And, yeah. All is freaking amazing. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going. So let's wrap her up. 
It was another awesome night. Thank you guys for joining us. Yeah, yeah thank you. That, this was awesome. You guys are so amazing. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. you guys are all amazing. You're, you're, you're sticking around. <laughs> yeah. I want to say, Steve, your skin looks really good. Yeah, looking good. Yeah, you're looking great. I feel, I feel real good. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not sleeping much anymore either. Yeah, when you're eating a couple of days. How many hours do you sleep? Uh, maybe between four and five. Nice, good for you. I get up at two thirty. <laughs> you get up at two thirty. I'm in the gym at three thirty. You're living more. Wow, I love that. I would yeah. love that. Yeah, I start. Yeah. Do you uh, sleep? Like I spend way more than two hours a day on me. <laughs> that's the. That's. I'm just saying, one to two hours. Minimum. The more you can spend, the better. Ninety minutes in the morning in the gym between the awesome. workout and then the sauna and the shower, and, and then I go back when I leave the shop. And I go back into the into the sauna for another half hour. Beautiful. Oh yeah. Love it. Beautiful. Amazing. <laughs> and that gives me my whole afternoon still. So it's just great. I love it. Uh, all right, all right folks, we'll uh, have a good night and uh, we'll see you back on the page. Very good. Awesome. Yeah. Good night. Good night.